Hey guys, welcome to my channel. As we all know, China is renowned for its enthusiasm for constructing large-scale projects to accommodate its continuously growing population. In recent years, with rapid economic and technological development, China's focus on infrastructure development has been steadily increasing, earning it the nickname Infrastructure Mania internationally. This title is not meant pejoratively. It reflects the astonishment of foreigners at China's infrastructure construction. China's bridge construction is truly unparalleled globally. From record-breaking spans to lightning-fast construction speeds, Chinese bridge engineering achievements leave American engineers awestruck. When Britain engineer Jeremy Clarkson first came to China, he was amazed by the country's infrastructure. China's road network. In 1988, China had no motorways at all. And now, 30 years later, it has 84,000 miles of them. That's more than any other country in the world. And they're only just getting into their stride. Since 2011, they've been building 6,000 miles of motorway every year. 6,000 miles a year! It beggars belief, and it's not like the terrain is easy. Here, though, there ain't no mountain high enough, and there ain't no valley low enough to stop them. This bridge, for example, is 34 miles long. And then there's this one, the Douge Bay Panjian Bridge. You could fit the London Shard underneath it twice over. I'm telling you, in Britain, we're doomed. Furthermore, China's engineering construction speed is truly incredible. For example, the San Yuan Bridge was completed in just 43 hours, which seemed as if China were playing with architectural Lego. Chinese engineers also accomplished the remarkable feat of building a train station in just nine hours, sparking heated discussions and debates internationally. How the Chinese do these things, they were able to build a whole new station in the space of nine hours by flooding it thousands of workers. We should be much more imaginative about getting infrastructure in instead of condemning people to being isolated in remote areas. Nice. If you want to spend your time admiring bridges, don't worry. China has an abundance of tall bridges scattered all over, enough to keep you on bridges for a lifetime. As China's urban development transitions from rapid expansion to a focus on reinforcement, structural engineering plays a crucial role in improving the quality of urban life. These bridges symbolize China's national strength and the Chinese government's commitment to providing its citizens with a high-quality life. China's bridge construction technology has evolved from followers in the 1980s to leaders in the 21st century, gradually taking center stage on the international platform. China is not only the largest recipient of overseas infrastructure project orders, but has also held the top spot for over a decade as if creating orders in the field of bridge construction is their destiny. China now boasts over a million modern bridges, including the world's tallest and longest sea-crossing bridges. It is known that China has built approximately 14,000 bridges on railways with a total length exceeding 5,500 miles of which about 4,000 miles are dedicated to high-speed rail. Out of the 100 tallest bridges built in this century, 90 of them are in China. So, the title of Father of World Bridges is well-deserved by China. In this video, we will delve into the extraordinary challenges of building gigantic bridges in China. Constructing such bridges in these rugged terrains is undoubtedly a daunting and exhilarating endeavor, but in China, it seems to have become commonplace. Before we begin showcasing these projects to you, we sincerely request your support for our video by subscribing and enabling notifications so that you don't miss any of our exciting updates. We highly value your thoughts and invite you to share your views on these remarkable engineering feats in the comments below. In China, 
we have witnessed numerous ambitious and innovative bridge projects that are seldom seen in other countries. The sheer scale of China's gigantic bridges leaves Western nations in awe. China has achieved remarkable feats in bridge construction, earning titles such as the world's tallest bridge, the world's longest bridge, and the highest number of major bridge construction projects. So, do you know which bridge holds the title of the world's tallest? Many may already know it, it's the Sidhu River Bridge. This extraordinary achievement was accomplished by Chinese engineers. When American engineers first heard about China's plans to build this bridge, they initially thought it would take thousands of years to complete. They conducted various analyses, believing that the local terrain was unsuitable for such a bridge. However, the construction of this innovative project was completed in just three years, with a staggering cost of 147 million US dollars, and the massive investment ultimately led to its successful completion. Upon hearing this news, American engineers could only maintain silence. In their country, constructing a bridge of such magnitude is exceedingly challenging, not only owing to technical complexities but also due to differing intentions between China and the United States in this matter. China builds bridges for the convenience and happiness of its people, while the primary motive for bridge construction in the United States is profit. Oh God, please no! No! Constructing such a bridge in the United States would undoubtedly be a loss-making venture, so America is not inclined to invest heavily in this area. The Sidhu River Bridge allows most vehicles to access previously unreachable areas. You can drive nearly 2,000 feet above ground as if you were riding in a flying car. The construction of this engineering marvel required meticulous planning and extensive research. The gorge crossed by the Sidhu River Bridge is incredibly deep, necessitating a structure that can withstand the strong winds generated in the valley below. To address this challenge, engineers opted for sturdy steel truss cable-stayed spans, ensuring the necessary flexibility and strength to keep the bridge as solid as a rock. The bridge's final height exceeded the initial design by hundreds of feet because it had to be raised to avoid cracks and caves on the mountainsides on either side of the valley. Despite a budget increase of around $40 million, this iterative process ultimately made the bridge exceptionally tall. The Sidhu River Bridge has transformed the commuting habits of the Chinese people, turning previously unreachable areas into easily accessible ones, reducing travel time, and changing the travel habits of people in the mountainous, highland, river, and gorge-laden regions of Guizhou. The bridge is part of the G65 Hangzhou-Ujin Expressway, spanning approximately 1,825 miles. It has reduced travel time from hours to minutes, promoting economic growth and regional integration. It symbolizes China's financial strength, engineering prowess, and global standing. The Sidhu River Bridge's status and influence in terms of both height and cost are unparalleled in the history of world bridge construction. Guizhou's rocky terrain and valleys make it a hub for high bridges, with over 250 bridges exceeding 100 meters, a concentration that surpasses any other country in the world, making China the capital of high bridges. In summary, while the Sidhu River Bridge is the tallest in the world, it is just one example of China's dedication to infrastructure development, economic growth, and the creation of astonishing architectural marvels. For perspective, the Empire State Building could easily fit beneath it. This bridge is like a gateway between heaven and earth, and its construction is more akin to building a ladder to the stars. Now, let's explore the Defonsu Bridge in Guizhou Province, which connects Renhui and Junyi, bringing convenience to countless travelers. This bridge stands out with its tubular arch design, supporting a six-lane commuter highway. This architectural style harks back to ancient China, where wooden arch bridges were often used to span waterways. Although none matched the scale of the Defonsu Bridge, spanning 410 meters and towering 280 meters high, the Defonsu Bridge showcases the strength of modern engineering technology in China, turning impassable mountainous terrain into accessible roadways. Guizhou's bridges are pushing the limits as if challenging the constraints of gravity. For those who don't believe bridges can float in the sky, it's a visual and spiritual marvel. Get ready to be amazed by one of China's tallest bridges, 
the Pingtang Bridge, a marvel of engineering in Guizhou Province. This cable-stayed viaduct stretches for two kilometers, spanning steep valleys and significantly reducing travel time between Pingtang and Luodian. Its three towers, each towering like skyscrapers, reach heights of over 300 meters, equivalent to a 110-story tall building. Driving on this massive bridge is both thrilling and awe-inspiring. Now, let's head to Guizhou Province to explore the remarkable Yangbaishan Bridge, a high bridge marvel that facilitates efficient travel in the rugged mountainous terrain of the region. Guizhou Province boasts nearly 1,000 bridges with deck heights exceeding 100 meters, an achievement unmatched by any other country. For example, the Yangbaishan Suspension Bridge has significantly reduced travel time between Giang City and Huangping County, cutting it from three and a half hours to just one hour. Often referred to as the Stilt Bridge, the Yangbaishan Bridge's pier lengths reach an astounding 110 meters, nearly twice as long as San Francisco's famous Golden Gate Bridge. As for the bridge deck, it soars over 300 meters above the turbulent waters of the Qingzhui River, making the crossing an exhilarating and at times terrifying experience. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is nothing short of a pinnacle achievement in sea crossing bridge construction worldwide. The world's longest sea crossing bridge, spanning 55 kilometers, it's objectively 20 times the length of San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. This marvel has reduced travel time from Hong Kong to Zhuhai and Macau from 3 hours to just 45 minutes, reshaping transportation and making significant contributions to the economy. However, the journey of constructing this bridge was filled with controversies. During its construction, nearly 20 workers lost their lives due to hazardous conditions. In 2017, a corruption scandal rocked the project, revealing that a Chinese company had manipulated concrete test results instead of conducting proper safety checks. Some international civil engineers also raised concerns about the bridge's resilience to strong waves and typhoons. Although the government disputed these claims, American engineers remained adamant about the bridge's potential dangers. Nevertheless, the completion of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge marks a new milestone in Chinese bridge construction, showcasing the extraordinary prowess of Chinese engineering technology while reminding us of the importance of safety and transparency in large scale projects. The Long Jiang Suspension Bridge, entering the earthquake prone region of Yunnan Province, connects Baoshan and Tingchong through a series of roads, tunnels, and the towering Long Jiang Suspension Bridge. This bridge is perched at a daunting height of 300 meters above ground and is equipped with advanced movable joints designed to withstand powerful earthquakes. Yunnan's history of seismic activity has caused significant destruction in the past, making the safety features of this bridge critically important. Imagine experiencing an earthquake at such a height, it's nerve-wracking for anyone, but the Long Jiang Suspension Bridge is just the beginning. So, what about bridges that have collapsed before? The Long Jiang Suspension Bridge showcases the pinnacle of technology, leveraging engineering expertise to overcome nature's challenges and setting a solid example for future bridge construction. Zhangjiji Glass Bridge is one of the world's most spine-chilling tourist attractions. Experience an adrenaline rush on this bridge, which stretches over 430 meters and hovers 300 meters above the ground. Carefully cleaned glass panels offer a clear view of the scenery below, providing an unforgettable photo opportunity for thrill-seekers. Those with daring spirits will want to visit this terrifying glass-bottom bridge in China, as it promises an exciting adventure. Standing on this bridge, you can overlook breathtaking natural landscapes, but for those with a fear of heights, it may be a significant test. When you step onto this bridge, you'll embark on an unprecedented adventure, one that will be etched in your memory. Don't forget to bring your camera because the scenery here is breathtaking then you must be very curious about how such a thrilling bridge was built, right? Please watch the video.
kick things off with the Hong Kong Juhai Macau Bridge, or as we affectionately call it, HCMB, because we're all about acronyms here. This bridge stretches a mind-blowing 34 miles or 55 kilometers across the Pearl River Delta. It's not just any bridge, my friends, it's one of the longest sea crossings in the whole wide world. Rumor has it that it cost a jaw-dropping $18 billion to build. Makes you wonder if they used solid gold, right? But fear not, it's all about cutting-edge engineering and a sprinkle of deep water drilling and seismic isolation. And here's a little twist for you, the HCMB had to tackle the classic comedy challenge of different driving sides between Hong Kong and China. So, what did they do? They looped the lanes over each other at one end, like a never-ending game of Twister. Because, hey, who doesn't love a bit of extra excitement while driving? Now, let's get serious for a moment. The HCMB plays a pivotal role in boosting the economy of the Greater Bay Area. Picture this. What used to be a four-hour journey between Zhuhai and Hong Kong has been reduced to a mere 45 minutes. That's right, guys, from a snooze-inducing journey to snap your fingers and you're their convenience. It's a win-win for industries and individual travelers alike. Moving on to the Hangzhou Bay Bridge, a game-changer in reducing travel time between Ningbo and Jiaxing. Clocking in at 22.2 miles or 35.7 kilometers, this bad boy ranks among the longest transoceanic bridges worldwide. It took over five years to complete, involving a team of 600 expert designers and a whopping 30,000 workers. The estimated cost? A cool $1.5 billion. Phew, now that's what I call an investment. But wait, there's more. The Hangzhou Bay Bridge isn't just functional, it's a sight for sore eyes. With its majestic S-shaped curved form, it looks like a work of art. And here's a little secret, that curve isn't just for show. It helps the bridge withstand everything Mother Nature throws at it, from high winds to tidal forces and even earthquakes. Safety and style, guys, a winning combination. And guess what? The service center near the midpoint of the Hangzhou Bay Bridge, also known as the Oriental Pearl Tower, offers panoramic views of the entire bridge. So, take a breather, enjoy the sights, and maybe snap a selfie or two. You've earned it, my friends. Next up, we have the Donghai Bridge, one of the longest cross-sea bridges on the planet. This magnificent marvel spans over 20.2 miles or 32.5 kilometers, connecting mainland Shanghai with the Yangshan Deep Water Port. Completed in 2005, it's a crucial link and a testament to human ingenuity. Now, let's talk about the bridge's gentle S-shaped alignment. Picture this, it bends with the current, like a synchronized dance move with the marine ecosystem. This design minimizes the impact on our underwater friends while providing a smooth ride for all the humans crossing. The Donghai Bridge isn't just about connecting Shanghai to the port, it's a multitasker. It also serves as a foundation for offshore wind farms. Talk about renewable energy and infrastructure coming together in harmony. Well played, Donghai Bridge. Now, brace yourselves for the piece de resistance, the Danyangkunchen Grand Bridge. Hold your breath, guys, it's currently the world's longest bridge. Spanning a mind-blowing 102.4 miles, it connects Danyang with Kunchen, showcasing China's stunning natural and urban landscapes along the way. This bridge is a behemoth measuring an average width of 260 feet or 79 meters and reaching a height of 100 feet or 30 meters. We're talking about some serious steel and concrete here, over 450,000 tons of steel and a whopping 81 million cubic feet or 2.3 million cubic meters of concrete. It took the combined efforts of over 10,000 workers and cost an estimated $8.5 billion. That's what we call a bridge of epic proportions. Hop on a high-speed train and get ready for an unforgettable journey across the Danyangkunchen Grand Bridge. As you speed along, feast your eyes on China's diverse landscapes, from tranquil lakes to vibrant city lights. This bridge not only enhances regional connectivity and reduces travel times between major population centers, but it also serves as a captivating backdrop, showcasing the beautiful contrast between urban development and untouched natural beauty. 
It runs parallel to the majestic Yangtze River, adding another layer of grandeur to an already breathtaking experience. Finally, get ready to dive into the depths of engineering marvels with the Shenzhen Zhongshan Tunnel, a project that's making waves in the world of cross-sea clusters. This incredible undertaking brings together bridges, islands, tunnels, and even underwater interchanges, all in one spectacular package. Stretching over 24 kilometers, this ambitious project connects the bustling cities of Shenzhen and Zhongshan, along with the vibrant Nansha district of Guangzhou. But that's not all. The S06 section of the tunnel, located in the magnificent Lingdingyang Sea, spans approximately 7.5 kilometers, reaching across a whopping 21 kilometers of the sea to link the eastern and western banks of the Pearl River estuary. With the combined efforts of 15,000 builders, this project is set to create a new landmark on the sea's surface. These builders are like modern-day aquanauts, taking on the challenge of constructing a gateway project in the Pearl River estuary. They're pushing their limits and diving deep to turn this underwater wonder into a reality. Hold your breath for this next achievement. Chinese engineers are making waves by achieving millimeter-level precision during the construction of the immersed tube joints underwater. They're breaking records left and right. The Shenzhen Zhongshan Tunnel is set to redefine what's possible in the construction of underwater tunnel immersed tubes, as it becomes the world's first bi-directional eight-lane steel shell concrete immersed tube tunnel. The Shenzhen Zhongshan Tunnel is still a work in progress. As the final immersed tube section and ultimate joint are successfully installed, the underwater tunnel will be fully connected. We eagerly await its completion and opening to traffic by the end of November this year, with traffic flowing smoothly in 2024. Once this engineering masterpiece is open, get ready for the ultimate convenience. Traveling from Shenzhen to Zhongshan will be a breeze, taking only 30 minutes. It's like teleportation through water. The 30-minute living and transportation circle will bring these two cities even closer together promoting seamless interconnection and making life in the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area splash. Hold on tight, because the Shenzhen Zhongshan Tunnel is about to take you on an underwater adventure like no other. Get ready to be amazed by the depths of human ingenuity and the wonders that can be achieved when we dive in head first. Picture this, China creates the world's largest and most accurate spherical radio telescope, with a whopping 500-meter diameter. This thing is like a cosmic detective, sniffing out secrets of the universe. And get this, it was independently developed by China. It's a game-changer for astronomical research, propelling China's knowledge of the cosmos to new heights. We're talking out-of-this-world stuff, guys. Now, let's cruise over to the mighty Three Gorges Dam, China's heavyweight champion of hydroelectric power projects. This dam is a legend in its own right, standing tall as the largest hydroelectric power project on the entire planet. It faced opposition from all angles, but China flexed its muscles and conquered the challenges like a boss. With a total length exceeding 3,000 meters and a generating capacity of 22.5 million kilowatts, this dam is an energy-generating beast. It's like a superhero, raking in profits after just a few years of operation. Talk about making money flow faster than the water itself. This colossal structure not only brings massive economic benefits to the country, but it also manages to attract a fair share of haters from the Western world. The U.S. doesn't like that China is growing so fast and set to overtake. Some countries out there seem to think they can take it down with a flick of their wrist. But hey, is this dam really a piece of cake to destroy? Let's dive into the details and find out. Picture this, the Three Gorges Dam is designed as a gravity dam, meaning those cement blocks that make up the dam are like free-spirited friends with no rigid connections between them. It's like a harmonious dance of balance and stability. And guess what keeps this beauty intact? It's all about that weighty friction generated by the dam's own sheer mass. We're talking about a whopping 41 million metric tons of cement used for the entire Three Gorges project. That's like building an empire out of concrete. Now, hold your breath, 
Because here's the real kicker. No ordinary weapons, my friends, can lay a finger on the main structure of the Three Gorges Dam. We're talking about bunker busters, missiles, you name it. They're just no match for this architectural marvel. They pose as much threat as a mosquito to a rhinoceros. You'd need some serious firepower, like high-yield nuclear weapons, to even scratch the surface. Nice. But here's the punchline. China happens to be a nuclear power too. Yep, they've got their own set of nuclear weapons. So, any country out there entertaining the wild idea of launching a nuclear attack on the Three Gorges Dam might want to rethink their life choices. I mean, who wants to risk a comprehensive nuclear retaliation from China? Not the smartest move, my friends. So, rest assured, this mighty dam stands tall and proud, defying the odds and proving its resilience. It's an engineering marvel that commands respect and protects China's water resources with unmatched power. But hold on to your seats because we're hopping aboard China's high-speed rail network, the envy of speed demons everywhere. Sure, high-speed rail exists in other countries, but China took it to a whole new level. China's high-speed rail is not only fast, but also runs smoothly. Picture this, a mischievous passenger places a coin vertically on the windowsill, defying gravity and common sense. And guess what? No matter how fast or slow the train zooms, zigzags, or even moonwalks, okay, maybe not that, that cheeky coin remains standing tall like it's auditioning for a high-speed rail circus. Woo! Yeah, baby! So, next time you hop on a Chinese high-speed train, don't forget to bring a coin and partake in this magical feat. In 2021 years ago, their network stretches over 37,900 kilometers. Yes, you heard that right, 37,900 kilometers of high-speed rail awesomeness. A staggering 70,000 kilometers will be reached in 2035. That's like zipping around the globe, and then some. It's an achievement that even developed countries like the US and Russia couldn't keep up with. China's like, hey, rest of the world, we're in the fast lane now. And speaking of bridges, China is building them like nobody's business. Three bridges, in particular, have left Americans with their jaws on the floor. First up, the Beipangjiang Bridge, towering nearly 600 meters above the river, shattering height records like a boss. Next, the Danyangkunchen Grand Bridge, part of the longest high-speed rail line on Earth stretching over 160 kilometers and looking downright majestic. And let's not forget the Hong Kong Juhai Macau Bridge, connecting cities and symbolizing endless prosperity. It's like China said, if you can dream it, we can bridge it. But wait, there's more. This short film perfectly showcases the awe-inspiring technological prowess of China's colossal dam construction projects. The Baiheaton Dam is currently the largest hydropower project under construction globally and the second largest in the world. The dam serves as the core structure of the hydropower station, carrying out crucial tasks of water storage and flood control. The dam body of Baiheaton is a 300-meter class ultra-high concrete double curvature arch dam, with a maximum height of 289 meters. The central line of the dam crest spans 709 meters, and the design incorporates six diversion bottom orifices, seven flood discharge deep orifices, and six flood discharge surface orifices, making the structure highly complex. The dam is divided into 31 sections, with the total volume of concrete pouring reaching 8.03 million cubic meters, surpassing the combined volume of three Great Pyramids of Giza. Being the largest hydropower station under construction in the world, with the highest level of comprehensive technical difficulty, the construction process of the Baiheaton Dam has set multiple world records. We must admit that Chinese engineers are truly remarkable in their capabilities. You see, China has once again demonstrated astonishing speed in engineering construction. The Yenshan Overpass Bridge, an iconic structure in a city in China, was successfully dismantled in just eight hours. This feat has not only amazed domestic and international spectators but has also sparked discussions online. 
The bridge, which once connected the two banks of the city, had become inadequate for modern traffic needs due to years of disrepair. The local government decided to demolish and rebuild the overpass bridge to improve urban traffic efficiency. However, the entire demolition process took only eight hours. Chinese engineers showcased their outstanding technical and organizational capabilities, precise planning, and unparalleled execution, attracting global attention with the renowned China Speed. Just 48 hours later, the brand new Yanshan Overpass Bridge stood proudly in the city, as if by magic. Next, let's explore how Chinese engineers install the main cable, weighing over 16,000 tons, on a suspension bridge and ensure its 100-year lifespan. People are curious about how the slender main cable on a suspension bridge can bear the weight of tens of thousands of tons without breaking. How do engineers install the main cable over the vast Yangtze River? And how do they guarantee its 100-year lifespan? Taking the Wufengshan Yangtze River Bridge in Zhenjiang, China, as an example. This typical suspension bridge has a main span of 1,428 meters, with a river span of 1,092 meters. It requires two main cables, each weighing over 16,000 tons with a tension capacity of 90,000 tons, equivalent to lifting a large aircraft carrier. The main cable is not as thin as it appears. It has a diameter of 1.3 meters and consists of 352 strands of lock bars. Each lock bar is 1,932 meters long and weighs 48 tons. Composed of 127 steel wires with a diameter of 5.5 millimeters, these lock bars are high-strength parallel wires treated with a corrosion-resistant zinc aluminum alloy layer, reaching a strength of 1,860 megapascals. The main cable is extremely robust, eliminating concerns about breakage. Let's see how the main cable is installed over the wide river channel. Below the suspension bridge is a construction passage called the catwalk, used to install the main cable. Before installing the main cable, workers establish anchorages and thread the main cable through the top of the bridge pier using a guiding wire rope. Then, the cable is lowered onto a tugboat by the riverbank. The tugboat pulls the guiding wire to the opposite bridge pier and connects it with another guiding wire. Winches on both banks tighten the guiding wires to the appropriate positions, ensuring safety. Each catwalk requires the installation of eight guiding wires. Once the catwalk is completed, the installation of the main cable can begin. The installation process of the main cable takes several months. Workers use a cable traction system to pull each lock bar from the northern bank's anchorage to the bamboo saddles at the top of the towers. The bamboo saddles evenly distribute the force on the main cable, change its direction, and transfer the pressure to the main towers. At the end of the main cable, there are anchorages where the cable is dispersed and connected to the anchoring system, relieving stress on the anchor bolts and ensuring structural safety. After the installation of the main cable, anti-corrosion treatment is applied to ensure its corrosion resistance over the 100-year lifespan. Engineers tightly wrap the 352 lock bars using a wire winding machine and heat shrink them with steel wires and high-performance composite wrapping bands, isolating the main cable from the external air. Additionally, an active dehumidification system injects dry air, reducing the humidity of the main cable and extending its lifespan. Through the aforementioned steps, the installation and anti-corrosion construction of the bridge's main cable is completed. In this way, through the efforts of Chinese engineers, a towering and majestic suspension bridge was built. Furthermore, another remarkable achievement by Chinese engineers is the relocation of a railway station. The movement error of 532 jacks is automatically controlled within a tolerance of 2 millimeters, ensuring consistent progress. Within just 38 days, the main station building of a long-distance passenger station, measuring 288 meters in length and weighing 30,000 tons, was successfully relocated and reinforced with steel bars and concrete, ensuring subsequent safe use. This is the world's first long-distance and large-radius building relocation, opening up more possibilities for future cities. The creativity and professional competence of Chinese engineers are awe-inspiring. 
Through exquisite technology and innovative engineering methods, they have achieved seemingly impossible engineering miracles. These projects are not only a manifestation of speed, but also the crystallization of Chinese wisdom and the spirit of hard work. Let's salute China's engineering capabilities in the spirit of pursuit of excellence, eagerly anticipating China's continued creation of astonishing miracles that awe the world. China has the world's most dedicated laborers, whose extraordinary efforts have set countless world records, leaving Americans scratching their heads in disbelief. They represent the cohesion of China and embody the national spirit. They are equally deserving of remembrance and praise. This is the explanation behind the nickname Infrastructure Maniac for China. Satisfying the electricity demands of its staggering 1.4 billion population, China has orchestrated a multifaceted approach that blends innovation, diverse energy sources, and strategic infrastructure development. This complex strategy revolves around harnessing conventional fuels, pioneering renewable options, and advancing cutting-edge technologies to power a rapidly evolving nation. In the Gobi Desert in northwest China, a group of engineers is searching for the enormous energy buried beneath the desert. A blasting engineer with 37 years of experience, along with his team, will use 1,418 tons of explosives to blow to smithereens a 38-meter thick layer of rock in an area the size of five football fields. At the same time, they must ensure that what goes up comes down in all the right places. The charges cannot be set off simultaneously, which would result in destructive seismic waves. Engineers choose to detonate the explosives in batches. There are 781 blasting holes divided into 12 groups. Each group will be detonated less than one hundredth of a second after the previous group. To make this work, the blasting team needs electronic detonators with an encoder. The operator must accurately control the ignition of thousands of electronic detonators in milliseconds. The Chinese have invested billions of dollars to build facilities in this arid inland area beside the desert to produce coal. The coal found here is of superior quality and has a very high heat value. It contains less sulfur and is therefore less damaging to the environment. Today, coal is still the main energy source that drives more than half of China's economy. This is one of the open cast mines operating in China. The coal is of high quality, and the seams are very thick. Coal seams of over 15 meters in thickness are regarded as super high seams across the world, and the seams here are up to 30 meters thick. Of course, to mine this precious coal, the upper layer of rock needs to be removed beforehand. After removing the gravel, a new coal seam reveals itself. The daily output of coal from this canyon is over 100,000 tons. It could generate enough power to supply one modern family for 10,000 years, but it's just 1% of China's daily coal output. Coal holds a primary position in China's energy structure. Because of that, it is particularly important to use coal efficiently. One of the most efficient ways is to build large power plants near the coal fields. This reduces transportation costs and keeps pollution away from populated areas, far from the cities. The west of China has substantial coal reserves, but it is very short of water, and that is a significant issue. Building a thermal power plant in a desert was impossible in the past because a traditional thermal power plant requires so much water for cooling. The boiler cannot operate without it. China has begun to construct large thermal power plants in the desert because it has found a solution. The secret lies in these passive cooling towers, which do not use water. As the hot air rises from the top of the tower, cooler air is drawn in at its base over an array of radiators. The 132 radiators are distributed in a V-shape. As this type of passive cooling tower doesn't require large quantities of water directly, it's possible to build them in the desert. The eastern part of China is home to just under 70% of the country's population and over 80% of its economy. However, most of the new energy resources are located in the west, thousands of kilometers away. Energy transportation has been a persistent problem for the country. China plans to construct more large power plants around the coal fields of western China, converting coal into electricity, and then transmitting the power through the grid to the east. This project constitutes the largest energy transmission project in human history. 
This power transmission line boasts the world's longest and highest voltage. It originates in the Yungar Basin in the far west of China and spans a distance of 3,324 kilometers, crossing deserts, mountains, and canyons to reach the densely populated east. This ambitious endeavor is projected to be completed in eight years. China has built more than 30,000 kilometers of high-voltage lines to establish the world's largest energy transmission network. To increase the system's efficiency, the voltage needs to be raised. The 1.1 megavolt high-voltage line is currently the highest in the world. It can transmit the energy generated by 80,000 tons of coal over a distance of 3,000 kilometers in a day. To ensure smooth and efficient transmission, the 20,000 conductor joints must be perfectly connected. The cables are connected through intense pressure. First, the outer aluminum wires are stripped back to expose the steel core. Then, the two ends of the steel core are inserted into a metal sleeve. A hydraulic clamp presses firmly on the sleeve to hold the two sections of the steel cable together. After the steel core is joined, a larger sleeve is used to connect the outer aluminum wires. The workers need to hold the two ends of the cables carefully and avoid damaging the conductors while dealing with the five-ton tensile drag on the cable. To manage this, they must use a special cable that combines strength and flexibility. The job not only requires concentration but also a head for heights. It will take six months to complete the new 3,324-kilometer line, and this is just the beginning. Historically, it has been very difficult for China to develop deep sea oil and natural gas resources. The energy stored in the deep sea is beyond imagination. As the sea becomes turbulent, the test commences. The key requirement for accurate underwater operations is equipment stability, even in rough seas. In order to achieve this, the engineering ship must maintain a fixed geographical position against the flowing currents and heavy waves. This is achieved through the approach power compensator system. When waves push the ship off its position, the compensator system instantly activates the corresponding thruster to counteract the force of the sea. This keeps the ship steady. However, when the ship rolls or is lifted by the waves, the thrusters alone are not sufficient. But this new ship comes equipped with another special piece of equipment, the world's largest crane with an automatic height compensation system. The high-power crane is capable of lifting up to 400 tons. As the ship rises and falls with the swell, the crane automatically detects the speed and direction of the movement. It then reacts instantly by adjusting its cable lines or turning its lifting arm to compensate for the motion. To fully utilize these favorable conditions, the test must continue well into the night. Images from the underwater camera show that despite the surging waves, the 400-ton test box only moves slightly and remains well within the control range. Everyone is very pleased with the result. With the advancement of deep-sea engineering technology, humanity has taken another step in harnessing resources from the oceans. China has become the first country to successfully mine fire ice from beneath the seafloor. Fire ice, also known as combustible ice, is a common name for methane hydrate. It exists as a flammable solid in which methane is trapped in a crystal structure of water. Originally assumed to only exist in the outer reaches of space, it has been found to exist in extraordinary quantities on Earth, below the seabed. It forms the largest reserve of fossil fuel on the planet. However, extracting it is no simple matter. To date, reliable mining techniques have yet to be developed. China is making conscious efforts to increase the proportion of clean energy in its energy mix. Hydropower will play an important role in this endeavor. This is the construction site of the Wudong Hydropower Station, one of the four cascaded hydropower stations in the upper reaches of the Yangtze River. The excavation works have been completed to build a massive facility on the mountainside to house the giant hydraulic turbines. Engineers are planning to cast a seamless concrete dam. Concrete fracture is a recognized technical challenge, and the larger the project, the more serious the issue. There's a saying among engineers that every dam has fractures. It will take 2.91 million cubic meters of concrete to cast the Wudong Dam.
The plan calls for a wall that is 275 meters high and between 12 and 51 meters thick to withstand the pressure from up to 270 meters depth of water. The dam cannot fracture have even the slightest fracture. The key to building a seamless dam lies in the continuous control system. The casting process must continue uninterrupted for 33 months. This uneven thermal distribution can lead to cracks. The key to building a seamless dam is achieving precise temperature control during the continuous casting process. However, abundant water resources are not found everywhere. The west of China faces water scarcity but enjoys ample sunshine. The power of sunlight and the duration of sunlit hours make it an ideal site for solar arrays. The key components of the array are these mirrors. When the sun rises over the Gobi Desert at 7 o'clock in the morning, more than 20,000 mirrors precisely reflect the light to the top of a tower. The generated heat is absorbed by molten salt, which carries the heat down into the plant where water is heated into steam to drive turbines for electricity generation. This method of generating electricity neither consumes fuel nor releases emissions, making it an ideal way to utilize solar energy. China has developed a precise sunlight tracking system for this tower-type photothermal power plant. Controlled by a computer, the 20,000 mirrors reflect sunlight to the top of the tower when aligned accurately. The regional conditions favor solar power, but there's more than one way to convert sunlight into energy. Not far away, another solar power plant ten times the size is under construction. It is a trough-type photothermal power plant. Unlike the tower type, this plant collects sunlight heat through curved mirrors. Both systems, however, rely on precise solar tracking. After installation is completed, the mirrors will be aligned to within less than one millimeter. This plant will feature 9,120 solar troughs generating 50,000 kilowatts per hour. China's currently installed solar power capacity exceeds 70 million kilowatts, accounting for one-fifth of the world's solar generation capacity. The increasing ways to utilize solar energy will revolutionize China's supply of clean energy. Its rapid development showcases China's genuine determination to transform its energy structure. However, other emission-free energy sources remain untapped. China is one of the nations taking the lead in seeking renewable energy from wind. Giant turbines have become a common sight in various landscapes. While wind energy is often harvested more reliably at sea, the harsh environment presents significant challenges for turbine installation and maintenance. Previously, turbine generators were assembled on land and then transported to their operating sites by semi-submersible vessels for final erection. This process was costly, slow, and resource-intensive. Today, offshore wind power appears to be the future of wind energy as breakthroughs in installation technology significantly reduce costs. On the eastern coast of China, a new installation method is being trialed. This newly developed tool can accurately set the blade's angle at a height of nearly 100 meters, aligning it perfectly with the rotor hub. If the machine functions as intended, the cost of offshore wind turbine installation will be significantly reduced. The progress of science and technology drives energy development, resulting in a mixed-source energy policy. On a remote peninsula in eastern China, the world's most advanced nuclear power unit is being prepared for operation. The nuclear reaction generates immense heat, which is used to convert water into high-pressure steam, driving generators to produce electricity. The core of a nuclear power plant is the reactor unit, constructed to the world's highest safety standards. Before commencing operations, numerous and repeated safety inspections must be completed. The engineers test a three-story high safety door made of special metals and manufactured using aerospace technologies. Like the safety door, nearly one-third of the plant's components are designed with the ultimate goal of safety in mind. At the business end of things lie this 10-meter deep pool and the adjacent reaction chamber. The pool will eventually be filled with pure desalinated water. The installation and replacement of fuel rods will take place here. This area has seen countless hours of meticulous preparation, ensuring everything runs seamlessly. The last round of inspections is nearing completion. The nuclear fuel, ready in the fuel bin, is securely stored at the highest level of security. 
Over 100 fuel units, sufficient to power the plant, are ready for use. You may already be familiar with China's reputation for colossal infrastructure endeavors, encompassing not only remarkable buildings and transportation systems, but also groundbreaking technology and energy initiatives. The first mega-project we want to introduce is the Chinese International Space Station. This is China's very own space laboratory and the second operational space station in orbit after the Russian Soyuz. The Chinese International Space Station consists of three modules with a total mass of approximately 90 tons and a design lifespan of 10 years. It will conduct various scientific research and technological experiments across multiple fields and invite astronauts from around the world to explore the mysteries of space together. Currently, five of its components have been launched, and six astronauts have conducted long-term stays and work on board. By the end of 2022, it's expected to complete all module launches and dockings and officially begin its operations. This project not only solidifies China as a space superpower, but also enhances our understanding of the universe. Would you like to visit the Chinese International Space Station? I certainly would, but I need to shed some weight first, or I won't make it onto the spaceship. The second mega project we'd like to introduce is the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. This is a colossal sea-crossing bridge connecting Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau, stretching over 55 kilometers, equivalent to 13 Manhattan Islands put together. It cost 126.9 billion renminbi to build, which is like buying 1,269 luxury mansions. The bridge employed advanced bridge-building techniques, including land reclamation, an ultra-long underwater tunnel, complex tower structures, high-performance steel, and concrete among others. Among them, steel consumption reached an astonishing 420,000 tons, which is equivalent to building 60 Eiffel Towers. From an overall perspective, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is primarily composed of three parts, a bridge, a tunnel, and artificial islands. It starts from the Hong Kong port, stretches westward across the Lingdingyang Sea, and connects Zhuhai and Macau. The total length is 55 kilometers, with the sea crossing section covering 42 kilometers, including both sea bridges and underwater tunnels. Artificial islands connect the bridge and tunnel segments in the middle of the sea. How are these artificial islands constructed? The foundation of the artificial islands was formed using 120 steel cylindrical structures, each with a diameter of 22 meters, a height of 39 meters, and a weight of 600 tons. These cylinders were prefabricated on the shore, transported to the sea by ships, and then sunk in the construction area of the artificial islands. The sand was filled inside them, creating a reclaimed land in the middle of the sea, forming the land base of the artificial islands. In simple terms, it's like building a massive retaining wall. Once completed, the area of the artificial islands reached 100,000 square meters, larger than 10 standard football fields. After crossing the sea bridge, vehicles can drive into the underwater tunnel. The underwater tunnel of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is 6.7 kilometers long, making it the longest submerged tube tunnel in the world. How was the underwater tunnel of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge constructed? In the 6.7 kilometer underwater tunnel, the deeply buried section is 5,664 meters long and is constructed by connecting 33 sections of reinforced concrete structures known as caissons. These caissons are 180 meters long, 37.95 meters wide, 11.4 meters high, and weigh approximately 80,000 tons, equivalent to the weight of an aircraft carrier. They were sequentially lowered into grooves on the seabed, over 40 meters deep, and then seamlessly connected with an error control of within 2 centimeters. The connected caissons had to ensure they would not leak water for 120 years of use, illustrating the high construction difficulty of this project. During its construction, it faced numerous challenges such as strong winds, tides, earthquakes, navigation protection, and environmental preservation. However, the Chinese didn't give up, and after 10 years of hard work, it was completed in 2018 and was hailed as one of the seven wonders of the modern world by The Guardian. 
This bridge not only reduces travel time between the three regions, but also promotes economic and cultural exchanges. This project is truly remarkable, turning the three regions into an integrated market and making it more convenient for us to travel and shop. Would you like to visit the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge? I certainly would, but I need to save up some money first, or I won't be able to afford anything there. The third mega project we'd like to introduce is the Matua Hydropower Station. Located upstream of the Yarlung Zhangwa River in Tibet, it is the second largest hydropower station in the world, only surpassed by the Grand Inga Dam in the Congo River's Inga Falls. The Matua Hydropower Station has an installed capacity of 16 million kilowatts, double that of the Three Gorges Dam, and an annual electricity generation of 74 billion kilowatt hours, equivalent to 10% of the national hydropower output. The construction of this hydropower station will greatly improve energy supply in Tibet and support the national goals of carbon neutrality and peak carbon emissions. Currently, the project has completed its survey phase and is expected to commence construction in 2022, with operations beginning in 2028. This project is truly eco-friendly, transforming Tibet into an energy-rich region and helping us better protect the environment and combat climate change. Would you like to visit the Matua Hydropower Station? I certainly would, but I need to learn some Tibetan, or I won't be able to communicate when I get there. The fourth mega project we'd like to introduce is the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Tunnel. This tunnel will connect the Laizhou Peninsula in Guangdong Province with Hainan Island, making it the third largest strait in China after the Taiwan Strait and the Bohai Strait. The Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Tunnel will accommodate both passenger and freight rail lines and will be dug 150 meters below sea level without disrupting maritime traffic. The project was approved and construction began in 2019, with a total planned investment of 150 billion renminbi. Once completed, it will link the high-speed rail networks of Guangdong and Hainan, reducing travel time between the two regions and facilitating the development of Hainan's free trade port. This project is truly marvelous, turning Guangdong and Hainan into a one-hour living circle and allowing us to enjoy the sunshine and beaches more quickly. Would you like to visit the Qiongzhou Strait Cross Sea Tunnel? I certainly would, but I need to buy a high-speed rail ticket, or I won't be able to catch a ride there. The fifth mega project we'd like to introduce is the Hongqi River Project. This is an ecological project that will divert water from the Yarlung Zhangbo River and Nujiang River to turn 30 to 80 million mu of desert into arable land, effectively solving the problem of aridity. This project will transport water from high-altitude areas in Tibet to the dry regions of Xinjiang without the need for electrical pumping. It will be entirely gravity-fed. The project requires significant investment, 10 times that of the Three Gorges Dam, and is a monumental project of our time with long-term benefits. Currently, it's in the planning stage and has not yet officially started. This project is truly magnificent, turning Xinjiang into an oasis and helping us better protect the environment while increasing food and water resources. China is a maritime power with a coastline spanning 32,000 kilometers, and it has constructed many cross-sea bridges. However, building bridges across the seas is quite challenging. The one you see now called the Zihongmen Bridge became China's largest span bridge from its completion, a record that has been held for a whole decade. In China's waters, there are over a dozen bridges with lengths exceeding 10 kilometers. For example, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is 55 kilometers long, the Zhoushan Cross Sea Bridge is 50 kilometers long, and the Jiaozhou Bay Cross Sea Bridge is 42 kilometers long among others. These bridges showcase China's remarkable prowess in engineering and construction. So, foreigners praise China as the infrastructure maniac, and China undoubtedly deserves this title. This is the Tsingang Bridge, which was completed and opened to traffic in 2001. The bridge is constructed from reinforced concrete, with its beams embedded with pre-stressed steel strands and concrete, jointly bearing the load of the bridge deck, providing the bridge with greater spanning capacity. The single span reaches an impressive 50 meters. However, such a span is still insufficient because, as a cross-sea bridge, it faces a crucial challenge, which is navigation. 
The single span 150 meter span Hongjiemen Bridge can only accommodate vessels of up to 500 tons for passage. However, facing the world's largest cargo throughput port, Ningbo Joshan Port, the cross sea bridge that connects the Joshan Archipelago and the mainland must provide ample space for passing vessels in the busy waterways making it an inevitable necessity to construct bridges with larger spans and higher bridge decks. The Jintang Bridge, with its 620-meter-long main span, crosses over a vital maritime route, allowing cargo ships of up to 50,000 tons to pass underneath. The secret to achieving such a large span lies in the two towering bridge towers, equivalent to 70 stories high, and 168 inclined steel cables. These cables securely hold the bridge deck and cleverly transfer the weight of the bridge to the sturdy towers. Its distinctive design offers strong resistance to wind, and it can be seen on most cross-sea bridges. Of course, this design is not always suitable. When faced with more complex underwater terrain, with currents and whirlpools that even span several hundred meters cannot overcome, a different type of bridge is needed a suspension bridge. The previously mentioned Zihongmen Bridge is one such suspension bridge, with two main cables with a diameter of about 0.86 meters connecting a massive deck, allowing it to cross turbulent and hazardous waters with its 1,650-meter span in a single span. The Tsingang Bridge, Xiangjiomen Bridge Bridge, Taoyomen Bridge, Zihongmen Bridge, and Jintang Bridge, and their connecting sections together form the Joshan Cross Sea Bridge. It is these bridges that connect the cities of Ningbo and Joshan via a sea highway. However, to truly bridge the gap across the sea, one bridge is not enough. We need a mega combination. This combination is bridged along with underwater tunnels. The Hong Kong Juhaimakao Bridge, completed and open to traffic in 2018, spans 55 kilometers and serves as the world's longest cross-sea bridge, connecting Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. The bridge winds its way and gradually descends beneath the sea. At the near end of the bridge, 33 giant pipes are submerged, forming a 6.7-kilometer underwater tunnel. These not only provide ample space for navigation but also reduce the impact of the entire project on the water flow. The artificial islands on both sides ingeniously transition the underwater tunnel to the cross-sea bridge. With such a combination, the longest cross-sea bridge in the world literally paves a path across the vast sea. Today, this mega-combination is set to create a new marvel once again, which is the Shenzhen-Zhongshan link that also traverses Lingdingying to connect the two cities in Guangdong province. The 270-meter-tall bridge tower you are currently seeing will together form the new city skyline with Shenzhen's towering skyscrapers. Simultaneously, the bridge tower supports the Lingdingyang Bridge with a span of 1666 meters, making it the largest span bridge in Chinese waters. Given the project's total length of 55 kilometers, with the underwater tunnel accounting for nearly 7 kilometers of that length, the use of immersed tubes is the most suitable approach overall. However, employing this method comes with significant technical demands, particularly involving extensive calculations to ensure that there are no gaps between each tube, achieving perfect alignment. This is essential to prevent water pressure from causing leakage or seepage. These are the widest giant immersed tubes in the world, with each section weighing up to 80,000 tons and their displacement even surpasses that of fully loaded aircraft carriers. They are transported to their designated locations by a unique vessel for submersion, forming a one-of-a-kind bidirectional eight-lane underwater tunnel. With the assistance of the Beidou Satellite Navigation System, these enormous immersed tubes, about 165 meters long, ensure millimeter-level installation accuracy. However, whether dealing with massive and majestic super bridges or large-scale underwater tunnels, the real challenge of crossing the sea lies in addressing the challenges posed by the ocean itself. In the southeastern coastal regions of China, there are over 300 days of strong winds at or above force 6 each year, making it one of the world's three major wind-prone sea areas. The intense sea winds bring large waves, making this area seem like a no-go zone for bridge construction. 
However, it is now the location of China's first and currently the world's longest cross-sea bridge that accommodates both road and rail traffic, the Ping Tan Haixia Cross-Sea Bridge. How does it overcome the strong winds and waves at sea? Firstly, it must have a bridge deck with sufficient weight and height. The total amount of concrete used in the entire bridge is enough to build four national theaters. Faced with such a massive bridge deck, ordinary winds and waves pose no threat to the bridge. Furthermore, dampers distributed throughout the bridge provide cushioning, absorbing, and dissipating impacts from natural disasters like typhoons and tsunamis. But to avoid windy weather, certain bridge components are prefabricated in factories and then transported to the construction site for assembly, significantly reducing the time needed for offshore construction. For example, the massive steel truss components, with a maximum weight of 3,400 tons, are lifted into place by large floating cranes that are almost 40 stories tall, equivalent to lifting over 2,000 cars in a single operation. The anti-collision boxes used to deflect ship impacts have also been cleverly utilized as temporary construction platforms, increasing the efficiency of bridge construction. Of course, the challenges from the ocean also come from below the surface. The sea bed here is extremely firm and almost devoid of sediment, which presents unique challenges. To secure the bridge firmly in this hard sea bed, Chinese engineers developed giant drilling machines weighing up to 344 tons. These machines bore massive holes with diameters of up to 5 meters in the solid rock. Subsequently, 18 giant piles with diameters of 4.5 meters and lengths of 60 meters are driven into the holes, forming a solid foundation for the bridge towers. With such a massive foundation, the bridge piers and towers can anchor securely, allowing the bridge to stand firm amidst wind and waves. The challenges from the ocean encompass not only strong winds, waves, complex geological conditions, water depth, currents, tides, and ship collisions, but also high salinity and humidity in the air, all of which can affect the lifespan of a bridge. This is also why building the 16-kilometer-long Ping Tan Haixia Cross Sea Bridge took more than 5,000 builders seven years to complete. Chinese engineers with their intelligence and diligent work ethic have created numerous engineering wonders in the land of China. For example, the Shenzhen Zhongshan Bridge, with a total length of 24 kilometers, involved over 10,000 builders in China, with a planned duration of eight years to complete this mega-project. As for the 55-kilometer-long Hong kong Zhuhai macau Bridge, from initial planning to opening for traffic, it took more than 20,000 builders a whopping 15 years to complete this colossal project. So, with the construction of cross-sea bridges being so challenging and time-consuming, why does China keep finding ways to cross the sea again and again? The answer is quite simple, it's for the convenience of the people. In the future, the Shanghai Zhoushan Ningbo Cross Sea Passage will directly connect Shanghai and Zhoushan, forming a closed loop with the cross sea bridges, uniting the entire Hangzhou Bay. Meanwhile, in Fujian, starting with the Ping Tan Haixia Cross Sea Bridge, a cross sea passage stretching 120 kilometers will extend. This means that in the future, high speed trains departing from Beijing will pass through the Taiwan Strait, arriving directly in Taipei connecting Taiwan and the mainland as one. China's infrastructure construction prowess is not only evident in the construction of cross-sea bridges, but also the construction of megadams. Next, we will take you through how Chinese engineers construct megadams above rushing rivers. By Heaton Dam, a colossal project with an investment of $9.2 billion that spanned 12 years, stands as a super engineering achievement where Chinese engineers overcame numerous technical challenges. This dam is a comprehensive hydraulic project that serves various purposes, including flood control, irrigation, power generation, and navigation. Its immense scale and high technical complexity make it a global standout. The completion of this project is undoubtedly a source of pride for Chinese engineering professionals and a testament to human achievement as a whole. The construction of the Baiheaton Hydropower Station commenced in 2007, and after 12 years of relentless effort, it was fully completed in 2019. 
by Heaton Dam has a height of 300 meters and a length of 2,300 meters, capable of withstanding a once in a millennium super flood, ensuring the safety of downstream areas. Moreover, the dam boasts the world's largest underground power plant, housing 16 sets of 1 million kilowatt hydroelectric generator units, with a total installed capacity of 16 million kilowatts. It produces an annual electricity output of approximately 60 billion kilowatt hours. This project provides robust energy support for China's economic development while reducing carbon dioxide emissions, contributing to China's and the world's environmental conservation efforts. Next, let's share another mega dam in China. The Lianghegu Dam, a colossal dam built on the world's rooftop, is taller than the Eiffel Tower. It is located in a high-altitude plateau region, with an elevation exceeding 3,000 meters. The project is situated in an extremely harsh geographical environment characterized by diverse climatic changes and frequent geological hazards, posing significant challenges and dangers to the construction process. Even more unbelievably, for the construction of such a massive engineering project, Chinese engineers chose not to use reinforced concrete but instead employed earth and rock as the primary construction materials for the hydropower station. The dam of the Lianghegu hydropower station is one of China's tallest earth and rock-filled dams, with a total fill volume of approximately 43 million cubic meters. This is equivalent to the volume of earth and rock from nearly 9,000 football fields. To ensure the stability and seismic resistance of the dam, the Lianghegu hydropower station employs various innovative design and construction methods, such as layered filling and zone compaction. These construction techniques optimize the compactness and strength of the Lianghegu dam, enabling it to easily withstand the impact of earthquakes and floods. The Three Gorges Project, a colossal undertaking that resides in the hearts of many, stands tall as the world's largest hydroelectric power station. Its average electricity production in just one second can power a Chinese person's life for more than four years. But did you know that upstream, over a thousand kilometers away, four other hydroelectric power stations can rival the Three Gorges in scale? On the Jinsha River, four superpower stations have been constructed, Xiangjiaba, Ziluodu, Baihitan, and Wudong. Together, their total installed capacity is three times that of the Three Gorges, in China, these colossal hydroelectric power stations are countless, dotting the landscape, nestled between the mountains, forming a massive tribe of hydroelectric giants that provide over half of China's hydropower. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth is China splurging on all these superpower stations? How do Chinese engineers manage to build these mammoth structures in such terrain? And what do they bring to the lives of the Chinese people? Well, Today, let's embark on a journey together to find these answers amid these mountains and rivers. The grand cliffs of the Jinsha River's Great Canyon stand tall and mighty, with the river's ceaseless torrents flowing day and night. Over millions of years, these rushing waters have carved narrow and treacherous gorges, reshaping the Earth's surface. Such landscapes are scattered all across southwest China. Tectonic movements over eons have contorted the land here giving birth to a sprawling mountain range that acts as a barrier, intercepting moisture from the oceans. Abundant precipitation, combined with glacial meltwater, converges into mighty rivers and makes this region the treasure chest of China's water resources. Take the Jinsha River, for instance, with its average annual runoff of a staggering 145 billion cubic meters. Its maximum flow can reach a mind-boggling 29,000 cubic meters per second. At this rate, you could fill up West Lake in just eight minutes. Apart from this ample water supply, the significant elevation drop provides enormous gravitational potential energy. This southwest region straddles the first and second tiers of China's topography, and the rivers that originate in the western mountains rush relentlessly, unstoppable. Within the Jinsha River's 3,481 kilometers of length, the natural drop exceeds 5,000 meters. This rich water volume and colossal drop combine to create what we call hydropower resources. 
In China's southwest, the potential hydropower resource capacity theoretically reaches a whopping 490 million kilowatts, accounting for 70.6% of the nation's total. Converting these resources into electricity would be immensely beneficial. That's why over half of China's 13 major hydropower stations are located in the southwest. But how do you harness this energy from the raging rivers? Well, first, you need a dam. Despite the Jinxia River's impressive natural drop, it's not enough to generate electricity efficiently over short distances. So, engineers usually build a massive dam in the middle of the river to raise the water level further, enhancing the drop. But constructing a dam in the turbulent river isn't a walk in the park. Even before construction begins, engineers must divert the river to create a dry construction site and then restore the original flow after the dam's completion. In 2014, the first superpower station downstream of the Jinsha River was completed, and it's called the Xiangjiaba Hydroelectric Station. This dam is a behemoth, with a crest length of about 900 meters, taking a leisurely 12-minute stroll to cross. Its maximum height reaches a towering 162 meters, equivalent to a nearly 60-story skyscraper. It's solid, like a heavyweight champion in a wrestling ring, firmly resisting the surging river with its massive weight. It's what we call a gravity dam, and it elevates the water level difference between upstream and downstream to a staggering 100 meters. However, such a colossal structure requires an enormous amount of construction materials. During its construction, a mind-blowing 14 million cubic meters of concrete were poured, enough to fill over 6,000 international standard swimming pools. The logistics alone for such a volume is a significant expense. So, are there other ways to construct these dams? Look at this one. It's like a graceful crane, spreading its wings and blocking the Jinsha River behind it. It's slender and elegant, earning the name by Heaton, which means White Crane Beach. Its maximum dam height reaches a towering 289 meters, akin to a 100-story skyscraper. However, its narrowest point on the crest is only 14 meters wide. Despite its slim profile, it can withstand a staggering 16.5 million tons of thrust, equivalent to the takeoff thrust of over 15 Long March 5th rockets. So, how do engineers pull this off? Maybe a change in perspective can provide the answer. From a bird's eye view, you can see that by Heaton Dam employs an arch structure, which we call an arch dam. This design efficiently transfers the force of the water's flow to the mountainous terrain on both sides. With the mountains sharing the load, arch dams don't require the immense bulk of gravity dams to remain stable. Although the dam is nearly twice the size of Xiangjiaba in terms of volume, it only required around 8 million cubic meters of concrete, less than half. Furthermore, arch dams, as statically determinate structures, boast high safety standards. They can even withstand over 10 times their designed load capacity. At the same time, China is continually building taller arch dams, claiming over half of the world's dams are taller than 200 meters. But not just any place can host such arch dams. They require extremely strict geological and topographical conditions, such as steep, narrow valleys and solid bedrock. Luckily, the numerous canyons in the southwest provide the perfect geographical environment for building arch dams. As a result, various types of arch dams have sprung up on this land, including the 240-meter tall Urtan Dam, the 270-meter tall Wudong Dam, and the world's tallest at 305 meters, the Jinpingai Hydropower Station Dam. As these colossal dams and reservoirs gather in the southwest, even the mightiest rivers temporarily bow down to store their energy here. But to convert this energy, we also need a superpower plant. Dams are not just impenetrable water barriers, they're equipped with intricate networks of pipes beyond their visible spillways. These pipes lead to the heart of the power station. Hydroelectric generators direct the water through these pipes to the turbines. The impact causes the turbine blades to spin, converting the gravitational potential energy of the flowing water into mechanical energy. The turbine, in turn, drives the generator, converting mechanical energy into electrical energy, ultimately producing electricity. 
In this process, we're merely harnessing the power of the water, consuming no fuel, emitting no greenhouse gases like CO2, and keeping it a renewable and clean energy source. In places where the riverbed is wide, engineers can construct powerhouses directly in the middle or behind the dam to house these massive generator units. But what about narrow mountain valleys? Where do you put the equipment there? This is where we find the world's largest network of underground caverns, a labyrinth of 246 tunnels crisscrossing for a total length of 217 kilometers. The largest cavern stretches 438 meters long, 34 meters wide, and 88.7 meters high, big enough to comfortably park 13 Boeing 737 airplanes. These caverns house the world's most potent hydroelectric generator units, with individual capacities of 1 million kilowatts, entirely designed and built by Chinese engineers. Just one of these units running at full throttle for an hour can provide electricity for over a thousand people for an entire year. Typically, the larger the capacity of the hydroelectric generator unit, the higher its efficiency. The 1 million kilowatt hydroelectric generator units at Baiheaton Hydropower Station can achieve an astounding energy conversion efficiency of up to 96.7%, making sure every drop of water is utilized to the max. It's hard to believe that in the mid-1990s, China's domestically designed hydroelectric generator units had a maximum capacity of just 300,000 kilowatts. Today, from the 770,000 kilowatt Ziluodu to the 800,000 kilowatt Xiangjiaba, from the 850,000 kilowatt Wudong to the 1 million kilowatt Baiheaton, these four superpower stations on the Jinsha River have witnessed the evolution of China's hydroelectric units. Once Baiheaton Hydropower Station is fully operational, it will produce over 62 billion kilowatt hours of clean electricity annually. This energy will traverse the high mountains and deep valleys of the southwest, sent through various high-voltage transmission lines to regions nearly 2,000 kilometers away in East China, infusing fresh energy into this magnificent network of west-to-east power transmission. And thus, China has built these superpower stations in the world's most water-rich regions. Across the country, tens of thousands of hydroelectric power stations stand tall above rivers and operate tirelessly day and night, providing over 1 trillion kilowatt hours of clean electricity to the people every year, equivalent to saving 430 million tons of standard coal and reducing CO2 emissions by 1.12 billion tons. Of course, the road ahead is long, and considerations like ecological protection, sediment control, relocation of communities, and disaster monitoring need careful attention in hydroelectric development. But one thing is certain, in the journey to reduce carbon emissions and achieve carbon neutrality, hydroelectric power will play a crucial role. For millions of years, the rushing rivers have nurtured the land and civilization. Today, these mighty rivers are benefiting their people differently. From the 480 kilowatt Shalomba hydroelectric station to the 22.5 million kilowatt Three Gorges hydropower station, and now the world's largest by Heaton hydropower station, one dam after another, one power station after another, has risen beneath the feet of generations of builders. This is why we can now use the gifts of this land to illuminate the homes of China, support the surging waves of modernization, and create a bright and hopeful tomorrow. The journey through China's mega dams is one of awe and inspiration, a testament to Chinese ingenuity, innovation, and the relentless pursuit of progress. Each of China's major projects showcases the remarkable feats that can be achieved when vision, technology, and sheer determination come together. This is Qingdao. This young coastal city has now become the third largest city in northern China in terms of economic output, ranking just behind Beijing and Tianjin. It is nestled by the coast and vying for attention with an explosive twist. That's right. Beneath the waves is right at the construction site of the Jiaozhou Bay Second Undersea Tunnel, soon to be the world's lengthiest underwater highway. But Qingdao isn't new to smashing records. A dozen years back, they dropped the mic with the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge and Tunnel, stealing the spotlight as the planet's longest cross-sea bridge and China's reigning underwater tunnel champions. 
So, what's cooking with this new world record and Qingdao's sudden passion for C-spanning structures? Well, let's rewind and appreciate Qingdao's cozy embrace of Jiaozhou Bay, which, believe it or not, was once just an ordinary basin. A mere 11,000 years ago, a bit of sea-level drama transformed it into the spectacular Jiaozhou Bay we see today. With its deep, expansive harbor and impeccable geography, Qingdao proudly houses the world's fourth-largest port, Qingdao Port. And it's not just a port, it's the heart of the city. On the bay's east side, you'll find the old city of Qingdao, while to the west, the West Coast New Area, affectionately known as Huangdao, has taken shape. Three decades ago, crossing the bay meant leisurely ferry rides, taking a whole hour to get across, not exactly a whirlwind. Things got a bit speedier with the Coastal Bay Highway, trimming the journey to a brisk 50 minutes. But the real game-changer arrived in 2011 with the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge and Tunnel, slashing travel time to a jaw-dropping 6 minutes. Suddenly, Qingdao's Free Trade Zone, Economic Development Zone, Port Hubs, and the legendary Qingdao International Beer Festival all relocated to the West Coast New Area. Cross-bay traffic went through the roof, with nearly 200,000 vehicles making the journey daily. To earn its title as a true bay city, Qingdao needed a fresh cross-sea passage, one that doesn't tick off Poseidon, scoffs at strong winds and fog, and keeps the travel vibes alive around the clock. Enter the Jiaozhou Bay second undersea tunnel now under construction, but it's not without its challenges. Stretching for a whopping 14.37 kilometers, it boasts six lanes in each direction and plummets to depths of 115 meters below sea level. Talk about tunneling into the unknown. This tunnel has to face two distinct rock formations. On the Huangdao side, it's all about rugged granite, while Qingdao's soft gray limestone and sandy layers add a twist. Plus, there are 22 faults lurking around with the Big Daddy named Tsanko Fault, a behemoth spanning over 200 meters. It's like a line in the sand, separating flat plains in the west from hilly terrain ruled by Laoshan Mountain in the east. Now, how do you drill through this geological maze? There's the drill and blast method, great for both hard and soft rock. Then there's the shield tunnel boring machine, TBM, method in the immersed tube method. Immersed tubes are costly and messy for the environment, so they're out. Faced with a cross-sectional diameter of 15.6 meters and water depths exceeding 100 meters, the TBM construction method carries significant risks, and therefore, it is also ruled out. So, considering the distribution of rock formations, combining drilling and blasting with shield tunneling is the most reliable construction method. Start with Drill and Blast, a rail rock and roll show, with engineers drilling 254 meter deep holes into granite faster than you can say explosives. Speaking of which, those sausage-looking explosives fit snugly into the holes and, with precise placement, blast the rock into shape. There's more to do, as these blast holes need three layers of reinforcement, inner and outer concrete jackets with a waterproof layer in between. And there you have it, a tunnel in the making. Yet, the real cliffhanger isn't the rock, it's the lurking faults, waiting to crash the party. The fragile rock here demands caution, or a floodgate of groundwater or seawater could wash everything away. So, radar scouts ahead, and if conditions look dicey, holes are drilled in cement injected to fortify the fissures. This solid barrier not only blocks water but strengthens the tunnel, letting it inch forward through the colossal Tsanko Fault at a slow and steady pace of 2 to 3 meters per day. Now, for the softer limestone zones, it's time for the shield tunneling method. Behold the legendary tunnel boring machine, TBM an 8-meter-wide juggernaut with a cutter head that eats rock for breakfast. It grinds boulders into mud and pumps them out through pipes. Simultaneously, the TBM hoists up concrete segments to create a seamless tunnel lining. 
It's like a giant palm holding up a one-ton weight, a true showstopper. Afterward, this colossal machine gets disassembled, transported to a 30-meter deep pit, reassembled, and heads off to conquer the seabed. But here's the kicker, finishing the main tunnel doesn't mean the end of the adventure. What about exhaust gases? What if construction drags on, or heaven forbid, accidents occur? Enter the hero of our story, the service tunnel. It's not for regular traffic, but it's the control center for tunnel wizardry, maintenance, pipelines, and emergency escapes. It's the tunnel's hidden superhero, working side by side with the main tunnels. And the big reveal? How do those eastbound and westbound tunnels meet? Imagine an epic chamber beneath the sea, a 30-story behemoth serving as the tunnel's junction and a launching pad for the TBMs. It's not just any chamber, it doubles as a ventilation hub, a feat most undersea tunnels manage with towering ventilation buildings. But not here, they're keeping things marine-friendly by placing those towers on land. The service tunnel, free of vehicles and exhaust, acts as the air channel, splitting the 10-kilometer ventilation distance into two neat segments. By the end of 2027, this colossal tunnel will be ready to steal the show. And when you walk through it, don't expect flashy lights or red carpets. It's all about subtlety, hidden beneath the seabed, letting marine life and shipping carry on undisturbed. Super projects don't need to shout, they can make a powerful statement by being remarkably unobtrusive and gentle. So, there you have it, with the might of these super tunnels, Qingdao is set to become a bona fide bay city. Who knows, along China's extensive coastline, from the 20-kilometer Qiongzhou Strait to the 100-kilometer Bohai Strait and the 130-kilometer Taiwan Strait, more natural barriers may soon yield to Chinese engineering genius one by one. Cue the epic tunnel music. The Jiaozhou Bay Second Undersea Tunnel China's mega-projects are one of awe and inspiration, a testament to Chinese engineers' ingenuity, innovation, and relentless pursuit of progress. Each of China's major projects showcases the remarkable feats that can be achieved when vision, technology, and sheer determination come together. Taking a journey through the annals of China's bridge development over the past century reveals an awe-inspiring evolution. From the Chiantang River Bridge to the Shanghai Nanpu Bridge, and from humble beam bridges to robust truss bridges, graceful arch bridges, and onward to majestic cable-stayed bridges and suspension bridges, we arrive at the grandeur of kilometer-spanning superstructures over the seas. This progression showcases how China's modern bridges have transformed from mere aspirations into global benchmarks, shifting from playing catch-up to setting the pace. The Beipanjiang Bridge serves as the epitome of this remarkable progress. Soaring 2,000 feet above the tumultuous Beipanjiang, it claims the title of the world's highest bridge. This groundbreaking project required three years of dedicated construction and a staggering $147 million investment. Substantial research grants, totaling millions of dollars, were instrumental in realizing this towering marvel. The creation of the Beipanjiang Bridge brought about a revolution in travel within China's Guizhou province, renowned for its challenging, rocky terrain that demands the construction of numerous tall bridges. Notably, the bridge outperformed China's high-speed rail in the region, reducing valley crossing travel times from three hours to a mere five minutes. China boasts a reputation for its towering bridges, with over 250 bridges exceeding 100 meters in height, more than any other nation in the world. Among these engineering marvels is the Sidu River Bridge, which once held the record for the world's highest bridge before the Beipanjiang Bridge's completion. The Beipanjiang Bridge unquestionably stands as a remarkable engineering feat located in China's Guizhou province. This bridge is renowned for its record-breaking height and innovative design. Soaring to an astounding height of 565 meters above the Beipan River, equivalent to a 200-story skyscraper, it proudly holds the title of the world's highest bridge when measured from the deck to the ground. Situated on the border between Guizhou and Yunnan provinces in southern China, the bridge plays a pivotal role in connecting these challenging terrains. The construction of the bridge was an ambitious undertaking, with a substantial price tag of approximately $147 million. When completed in 2016, 
It officially set a world record for its height, earning recognition from the Guinness World Records in 2018. This cable-stayed bridge features four lanes and boasts the world's second longest span of steel truss cable. Its innovative design and engineering solutions were imperative to overcome the rugged terrain and the need to withstand strong winds in the deep valley. The Beipanjiang Bridge has had a profound impact on transportation in the region, significantly reducing travel times between previously inaccessible areas. For example, it transformed the journey between Yunnan's Zenwei City and Guizhou's Chushi Cheng County from a five-hour ordeal into a mere one-hour commute. The first bridge of the Beipan River is not only a vital transportation route, but also a captivating scenic attraction. Standing on the bridge, you can overlook the rushing waters of the Beipan River, feel the gentle breeze caused by its turbulent currents, and experience the power of nature. The bridge's unique design gives you a sensation of floating above the river as if strolling through the clouds. With its distinctive design and robust structure, this bridge has created opportunities for human success and prosperity, allowing people to deeply appreciate the harmonious coexistence of humanity and nature in this exquisite and magnificent engineering marvel. Furthermore, the bridge has spurred economic growth by increasing accessibility and attracting tourists to the area. It has enhanced regional integration, enabling people to move more freely. China is renowned for its extensive portfolio of towering bridges, with the Beipanjiang Bridge being a prime example. China leads the world in bridge construction and engineering, boasting several of the world's highest bridges. While the Beipanjiang Bridge currently holds the title of the world's highest, future projects may surpass it. Nevertheless, China's unwavering commitment to infrastructure development ensures its continued leadership in the construction of tall bridges. The Beipanjiang Bridge stands as a testament to China's engineering prowess and dedication to infrastructure development. Its completion has significantly improved transportation and connectivity in southern China, solidifying its status as an iconic symbol of innovative engineering. Height of the world's 20 mega bridges that exceed 300 meters from deck to water, all are in China. So it's not likely that the Beipanjiang Bridge will lose its title as the highest bridge anytime soon and if it did it would probably lose it to another. Chinese engineers' creation of the bridge construction not only made commuting easier but broke some records. Themselves look good they also created one of the coolest and most breathtaking man-made structures in the world that seemed to blend perfectly with its surroundings. Worth it the Beipanjiang Bridge might be the highest in the world, but it's nowhere near the most expensive the title belongs to Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge which costs $20 billion. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is a milestone in the history of Chinese engineering construction, boasting the longest span, the highest investment, and the most challenging construction complexity in the country's history. The total length of the bridge and tunnel system is 55 kilometers, designed for a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, with a total project investment of 126.9 billion yuan. Its completion marked another significant achievement in China's bridge-building history, earning it the distinction of being one of the seven wonders of the modern world. The main structure of the bridge is approximately 29.6 kilometers in length, consisting of a combination of bridges, artificial islands, and tunnels. It comprises a 5.3-kilometer tunnel and a 22.9-kilometer steel structure bridge. Two artificial islands are connected by underwater immersed tube tunnels, and these islands are further linked to the mainland by bridges. The main bridge alone required a staggering 420,000 tons of steel, equivalent to the weight of 60 Eiffel Towers. The entire construction of the bridge followed a modular approach, where all components, regardless of size, including the towering bridge piers, bridge decks, and 100-meter-high bridge towers, were manufactured as complete units in onshore factories and then transported to the sea for assembly, akin to assembling building blocks. This method ensured precision in construction and minimized the environmental impact of the project. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is not merely a bridge but a testament to human courage and ingenuity. It bears witness to technological breakthroughs and the miracle of human cooperation. Whether you journey across the bridge towards the future or take a leisurely stroll upon it, 
this bridge will forever stand as an eternal symbol connecting humanity with nature. In the years to come, as you walk upon the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge once more, you may reminisce about its construction journey and the profound human wisdom and courage it embodies. Regardless of where you are, this bridge will forever link your heart with the magnificent scenery, leaving an indelible mark of beauty. Next, let's take a look at another epic bridge in China, the Yachi Bridge. This bridge boasts a deck height of 434 meters, ranking fifth on the list of the world's tallest bridges. It is also the world's largest cross-border steel truss cable stayed bridge, constructed with intersecting red steel materials. The main span between the towers reaches 800 meters, making it the world's longest mountainous cable stayed bridge, reducing the travel time from Gyeong to Chenxi from 2 hours to just 50 minutes. The Balan River Bridge is the world's first kilometer-class cross-border mountain canyon suspension bridge, with a main span of 1,088 meters. Its completion has shortened the travel time from Huanghuashu Waterfall to Guanlin County from 30 minutes to just 5 minutes. The Hajang Special Bridge, with its towering 195-meter pier number 11, holds the record for the world's tallest concrete continuous steel truss bridge pier. However, among all the bridges in China, the true champion of bridge structure height is the Pingtang Special Bridge, with its central tower reaching a height of 332 meters, setting a new world record for cable stayed bridge tower height. This bridge opened to traffic in December 2019, reducing the travel time from Pingtang to Luodian from two and a half hours to just one hour, making it a vital transportation route in Guizhou. Chinese bridges, much like high-speed railways and aerospace endeavors, have become a shining hallmark and powerful symbol of China. They are displaying their majestic grandeur and boundless vitality to the world, spanning across oceans and leading towards the future. We head to the Longjiang Suspension Bridge in Yunnan, China. This bridge connects the cities of Baoshan and Tingchong and stands at a height of 300 meters, equivalent to the height of a 100-story building. The bridge is located in a seismic zone with a history of strong earthquakes. To ensure the bridge's safety, engineers employed advanced seismic technologies and materials, but you can imagine the feeling of experiencing an earthquake on a bridge 300 meters high. It's bound to be hair-raising. Yet, that's just the beginning. We'll soon see even higher and more dangerous bridges. The Siju Bridge spans the Sita River, linking Inchi Tujia and Miao Autonomous Prefecture in Hubei Province with Fingjia County in Chongqing City, serving as a vital connection between China's central and western regions. It stretches approximately 2.5 kilometers and soars to a height of 560 meters, surpassing the Empire State Building in height. Constructing this bridge posed an immense challenge due to its location nestled between two towering mountains, spanning a deep and precipitous valley. Engineers even used rockets to launch the first cable across. After three years of grueling efforts, this bridge was finally completed. Driving on this bridge allows you to enjoy magnificent landscapes and a thrilling experience. But this is not the world's highest bridge. That title belongs to another Chinese bridge. It is the Beipanjiang Bridge. The bridge has a total length of 1,314.4 meters and is part of the Hongroe Expressway. It starts from Duge Town in Yunnan and reaches Laolong Village in Guizhou. In between, it spans the Nizhu River Grand Canyon, earning it the name Nizhu River Bridge. The completion of the Beipanjiang Bridge marked the full opening of the 3,404-kilometer-long Hongroe Expressway. What sets it apart is its height above the river, standing at a staggering 565.4 meters, equivalent to the height of a 200-story building. In the world of bridges, it is considered the tallest. If a person were to fall from the bridge, it would take over 10 seconds to reach the ground, a terrifying prospect for anyone. The Panjiang Bridge claimed the top spot in the world's highest bridge competition, setting a Guinness World Record in 2018. However, China didn't undertake the construction of this bridge for awards. It was done to facilitate local travel. The distance between Duge Town and Puli Township may be relatively short, but the challenging, mountainous terrain and absence of a direct road turn it into a four-hour journey. 
requiring travelers to traverse three mountain ridges and cover around 40 kilometers of mountain roads. However, with the completion of the bridge, the journey was reduced to just one or two minutes, greatly enhancing the convenience of travel between the two sides and promoting economic development in the region. Why was the bridge constructed at such a high relative altitude of 565.4 meters? The area where Beipanjiang Bridge is located, within the Yungui Plateau, features a karst landscape formed by the dissolution and deposition of soluble rock by underground and surface water. The fragile mountain structure in this region doesn't lend itself well to bridge construction. After a year of surveying and exploration, Chinese engineers determined that 565.4 meters was the optimal height to avoid caves and fissures. When planning the Beipanjiang Bridge, American engineers claimed that it would take China 3,000 years to complete. However, the bridge's construction began in 2013, and it was operational by the end of 2016, taking only four years. The bridge is made up of a pair of massive concrete towers. The tallest is 269 meters high. The 20,000-ton steel bridge deck is the length of five Titanic. One World Trade Center in New York could fit underneath. The deck is attached to the towers with 400 kilometers of cables, enough to stretch from London to Amsterdam. The Beipanjiang Bridge stretches 1.3 kilometers across the ravine. The tips of the towers reach 750 meters above the valley floor, higher than two Eiffel Towers and the Statue of Liberty combined. During the construction of the Beipanjiang Bridge, Chinese engineers encountered numerous incredible difficulties and challenges. The first was the terrain, as the Beipanjiang Canyon had steep terrain and complex geology, making construction extremely difficult. The second challenge was extreme weather. Constructing a bridge in the southwestern region entailed addressing recurrent geological hazards, in addition to contending with severe weather conditions such as strong winds, dense fog, heavy rain, and freezing temperatures, which placed high demands on the bridge's ability to withstand these conditions. The primary question was what type of bridge to construct. Conventional beam bridges, arch bridges, and concrete cable-stayed bridges couldn't span the 670 meters of the Beipanjiang Canyon. Designers had to choose between steel truss bridges, cable-stayed bridges, and steel truss girder suspension bridges. Due to the fragile cliff slopes of the Karst region, which couldn't support the load of a suspension bridge, a cable-stayed bridge was ultimately chosen. To manage economic costs and environmental impacts, Chinese engineers designed the Beipanjiang Bridge as a double-tower cable-stayed bridge with a span of 720 meters. After the promising blueprint was created, the real challenges began. The U-shaped Nizhu River Canyon extended over 500 meters deep, making it impossible to transport the bridge sections, each weighing hundreds of tons, to the construction site. As a solution, designers divided each section into smaller units of around 10 tons and used reassembling and cantilever launching techniques. Furthermore, Chinese engineers had to use 224 strands of 15.2 mm diameter cables to support the weight of the entire bridge, a seemingly impossible task that was achieved with galvanized steel wire boasting a tensile strength of up to 1770 megapascals. To counteract corrosion of the cable stays from extreme weather, Chinese engineers added layers of galvanization, grease, and HDPE both inside and outside the stays, significantly extending their lifespan. On September 10, 2016, after overcoming numerous challenges, the Beipanjiang Bridge was officially completed. Would you dare to drive on this bridge? If you find this terrifying, stay tuned for even more spine-chilling bridges to come. The Jinshajiang Bridge, which crosses the Jinsha River in Yunnan. The main tower is 228 meters tall, with a vertical height of 479 meters, which is equivalent to the height of a 170-story building. The height from the bridge deck to the valley bottom is 335 meters, making it the second highest bridge in the world, surpassed only by the Beipan River Bridge. The Jinsha River Bridge is currently the world's largest cable-stayed bridge spanning a mountainous gorge, with a length of 1,386 meters, 
consisting of 128 steel truss segments. Each individual steel truss segment weighs a staggering 175 tons, which is equivalent to the weight of over 100 family cars. The bridge's two main cables are composed of 42,000 high-strength galvanized steel wires, with a total length of 87,000 kilometers, enough to encircle the Earth twice. When it comes to the world of bridges, China's achievements are not just bragging. China's bridge construction technology is truly incredible. Next, we visit the Lzijiang Bridge, a giant bridge that stretches 798 meters across a treacherous mountain valley. While its length may not compare to some of the other super bridges in this video, the Luaji River Bridge is considered an engineering marvel. It holds the record as the world's longest single tower suspension bridge, distinguishing itself from bridges of similar length with its sole tower, while the remaining structure is supported by cables from a distance. This bridge appears as if it's defying gravity, hanging in midair without visible support. Furthermore, this bridge was constructed in challenging terrain, extending from a 156-meter-tall tower to an anchor point at the far end of a tunnel, all on a steep slope with a 54-degree incline, setting the world record for the steepest tunnel anchor point. Despite its complexity, this bridge plays a crucial role in remote areas, becoming a key component of the 190-kilometer-long U2 expressway that connects Yunnan to major centers like Shanghai. Previously, navigating this valley took over an hour, but the Lzijiang Bridge reduced that time to just two minutes, allowing vehicles to travel at speeds of up to 80 km per hour on the four-lane bridge. This complex megaproject started in 2019 and was completed in three years. This bridge has significantly improved the underdeveloped infrastructure in the mountainous regions of China, promoting economic and transportation connections in the surrounding areas. It has played a crucial role in advancing tourism and economic development in the central Yunnan region. Next, we arrive at the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, located between the Chinese provinces of Guangdong and Hong Kong and crossing the South China Sea. It holds the record as the world's longest sea crossing bridge, stretching 55 kilometers and curving like a dragon above the sea. This bridge not only connects the major cities of Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau but also promotes economic and cultural exchanges. However, its construction has been fraught with controversy and risks. During construction, nearly 20 workers lost their lives, and there was a scandal involving falsification of concrete quality. Additionally, American engineers questioned whether this bridge could withstand the impact of strong winds and huge waves. Although these allegations were officially denied, the safety of this bridge remains a subject of debate. Our journey is not over yet. We're about to show you a bridge that is nothing short of breathtaking. The Qishui River Bridge, another super bridge constrained by extreme geographical conditions, spans over 2,000 meters, connecting the provinces of Sichuan and Guizhou, with a peak height of approximately 350 meters. Constructing this bridge posed a major challenge due to the limited access to the construction site on the Sichuan side, where cliffs made it impractical for most heavy equipment traditionally employed in bridge construction to reach the area. Thus, engineers decided to build the bridge deck off-site and later transport it in three segments to the gorge. They used 158 cables to support the bridge deck, ensuring its proper placement using 3D visualization technology. The construction budget for this bridge was just $147 million, far lower than some of the astonishing super bridges we'll mention shortly. Then there's the Bailing River Bridge, a cable-stayed steel box girder bridge located above the Bailing River in Guizhou. Completed in 2017, it spans 1,080 meters with a vertical height from the bridge deck to the valley floor of 370 meters, equivalent to 120 stories making it the world's eighth highest bridge. Next, we visit the Guazigu Bridge in Xinjiang, which is Xinjiang's first cable state and highest bridge. It is the largest and most important bridge in Xinjiang, as well as China's first road steel truss cable state bridge, considered a miracle of infrastructure construction in Xinjiang. The Guazigu Bridge spans approximately 700 meters, with the bridge deck height above the valley floor of about 200 meters. 
The entire main bridge is constructed using steel truss technology, with 17,000 tons of specialized bridge steel and high-strength bolt connections instead of traditional welding. Precision during installation had to be maintained within 2 millimeters, costing about $3.4 million per meter, with a total cost of $2.39 billion. In constructing the Guazagu Bridge, groundbreaking technologies were applied, such as large volume concrete temperature control, tower and beam asynchronous construction processes, hydraulic jacking, and self-moving templates, establishing valuable experience in constructing highways in mountainous areas. The Guasagu Bridge boasts a spectacular and unique design. Its S-shaped structure winds through the valley, surrounded by towering peaks and colorful flowers. Driving across this bridge feels like being in a painting. Finally, we arrive at the Aijai Bridge, a cable-stayed steel box girder bridge located above the Aijai River in Hunan. Completed in 2016, it stretches 1,176 meters with a vertical height from the bridge deck to the valley floor of 336 meters, ranking it as the world's ninth highest bridge, following the Beipanjiang Bridge, the Jinshajiang Bridge, and the Balu River Bridge. The long dragon-like main span resembles a great sword piercing the clouds, and it appears as a rainbow bridge, connecting the picturesque landscapes on both sides of the valley. The two towering 206-meter-tall main towers serve as the guardians of the bridge, especially dazzling at night. The cable length and height of the bridge deck above the ground also reach the world's peak. These accomplishments showcase the unwavering spirit of Chinese engineers and their relentless pursuit of the unknown. The Aizhai Bridge goes beyond human imagination, incorporating elements of harmony between people and nature, tradition and modernity. It embodies the courage of Chinese engineers in innovation and conveys respect for nature. It will undoubtedly become a lasting human miracle, inspiring future generations to stay true to their original aspirations and promote a positive cycle of harmonious development with nature. Standing on the observation deck at 200 meters high, you can not only witness the magnificent landscapes but also contemplate the harmonious coexistence of humans and nature. These are the most hair-raising bridges in China that we've shared with you. China's bridge projects are undeniably magnificent spectacles, transforming not only the country's domestic transportation and economic landscape but also showcasing China's extraordinary strength in bridge construction technology and innovation. These bridges are not just transportation facilities. They symbolize the relentless pursuit and innovation of the Chinese people, symbolizing the unyielding spirit of exploration in the face of challenging projects. China's bridge construction not only brings invaluable experience domestically but also inspires other countries to actively catch up with China's leading position in infrastructure development. Chinese engineers continue to break technological barriers by building enormous transportation bridges. These bridges are crucial elements of China's vast road network, enabling efficient and rapid transportation. It's worth mentioning that many of the world's most challenging and record-breaking bridges were designed and constructed by Chinese engineers. China's commitment to infrastructure development has created a miracle that impacts the lives of over a billion Chinese citizens and drives domestic economic growth. These cases demonstrate the remarkable achievements China has made in bridge construction in recent years, garnering worldwide attention and setting a positive example for other countries. The extraordinary capabilities of China in bridge construction have convinced many Americans that China is a developed country. What are your thoughts on China's astounding capabilities in bridge construction? But what lies behind this seemingly magical metamorphosis? What propels China's prowess in erecting colossal infrastructure projects that seemingly defy the bounds of possibility? The answer is a confluence of factors, each contributing its own unique force to this narrative of advancement. Central to China's achievement is the resolute support and visionary planning by its government. The nation's centralized decision-making structure has enabled swift resource allocation, ensuring that infrastructure projects receive the focus they deserve. Each of China's meticulously crafted five-year plans serves as a roadmap, guiding investment and development toward a brighter future. This dedication to a long-term vision is the bedrock upon which China's infrastructure edifice stands. 
A commitment to projects with extended payback periods demonstrates a profound understanding that true progress is not bound by the confines of a single generation. This visionary approach, a rarity in today's world of short-term gains, has enabled China to turn ambitious dreams into tangible reality. The financial might behind China's infrastructure expansion cannot be underestimated. A booming economy and a high savings rate have furnished the nation with the financial muscle to pour into these ventures. Moreover, a shrewd utilization of domestic and international financing mechanisms, including dynamic public-private partnerships, has ensured that these endeavors transcend monetary barriers. China's labor force, a reservoir of skilled engineers, construction workers, and technical wizards, forms another linchpin in this narrative. The swift execution of intricate projects hinges on the shoulders of these experts, who marshal their expertise to turn blueprints into tangible infrastructure. Additionally, substantial investments in research and development empower China to leverage cutting-edge technologies, propelling it to the forefront of global construction and project management practices. Strategically, China has harnessed the power of infrastructure to drive economic growth and bridge regional disparities. By focusing on less developed regions, China has effectively turned its infrastructure web into a tapestry that weaves disparate corners into a cohesive whole. This orchestrated approach exemplifies the nation's resolve to create an economy that thrives on inclusivity and harmonious growth. The government's prowess in fast-tracking approvals and streamlining regulatory processes further underscores China's distinctive approach to development. In a realm where bureaucratic hurdles often impede progress, China's deftness in navigating these challenges ensures that infrastructure initiatives are not bogged down in red tape. It is imperative to acknowledge that China's infrastructure prowess is not without concerns. Environmental implications, debt sustainability, and community displacement warrant careful consideration in this grand narrative. Yet, as China forges ahead, it does so with the recognition that a magical transformation also demands meticulous care and mindful stewardship. In the heart of this evolution stands the Beijing Daxing International Airport, a gleaming monument to China's transport infrastructure supremacy. With a sprawling terminal encompassing 1.4 million square meters, this airport is a convergence of modernity, innovation, and comprehensive connectivity. A marvel of design, it transcends the conventional boundaries of an airport, incorporating the vitality of an urban hub within its walls. The ambitious interplay between transport hubs, city clusters, and transport networks weaves a tapestry of seamless connectivity that fuels economic growth. This synergy aligns with the nation's strategic vision, as laid out in the 13th Five-Year Plan, resulting in a dynamic that amplifies China's economic vibrancy manifold. But what lies beyond these architectural marvels? How does the common individual navigate this web of transformation? The answer lies in the intricate calculus of travel choices. Standing at the precipice of progress, individuals are presented with a trio of choices, air travel, high-speed rail, and traditional railways. Delving into the realm of numbers, the calculation takes on a life of its own. The allure of flight, swift and efficient, promises a journey of 1.5 hours from Daxing. Conversely, the charm of the high-speed rail beckons, offering a five-hour route to Beijing. Nestled in the heart of these options lies the allure of the traditional railway, a journey that embraces the tranquil passage of time, spanning 5.50 hours. In a world where convenience is king, high-speed rail emerges as the epitome of comfort and economy. Its siren call is irresistible, for it not only ensures swiftness but also affordability and serenity, melding seamlessly into the modern rhythm of life. This dynamic growth narrative is more than mere infrastructure expansion, it is a paradigm shift in societal mindset. The adage if you want to be rich, build a road first encapsulates the ethos of a nation that once embraced an agrarian identity. Roads and railways, once utilitarian arteries, have transformed into conduits of prosperity, beckoning an era of connectivity-driven economic growth. China's infrastructure prowess has unveiled a deeper symbiosis between development and mobility. This transformation is more than just a matter of concrete and steel, it is a symphony of networks, a harmonious dance between technology, economy, 
and human aspiration. The ripple effects of integrated transport networks amplify the passage of goods and the fluidity of trade, creating a symphony of prosperity that resonates throughout the nation's economic landscape. Yet, as with any grand narrative, challenges abound. Amidst the rapid expansion of transport arteries, China grapples with the task of harmonizing density, efficiency, and planning. The disparity between urban and rural connectivity remains a poignant reminder that the journey to comprehensive development is ongoing and that every road must lead to progress, irrespective of where it begins. In the bucolic embrace of rural China, the narrative takes a turn, peering into the uncharted realms of rural infrastructure. The vast investments and improvements that have reshaped the urban expanse are paralleled by the challenges that persist in rural landscapes. It is a dichotomy that underscores the complexity of building a harmonious nation, where each corner basks in the warmth of progress. The road to rural prosperity is paved not only with asphalt but also with visionary planning. A roadmap emerges one that prioritizes not only road construction but also the sustenance of vibrant communities. A road once constructed, forms a bridge between dreams and reality, a conduit that empowers individuals to transcend the confines of their birthplaces and embark on journeys that lead to empowerment. At the heart of this narrative is the inimitable question of balance. As China's infrastructure web extends its reach, the harmony between progress and sustainability must be preserved. The ephemeral footprint of roads must be matched by the lasting echoes of development echoing across the years in a testament to mindful stewardship. China's story of infrastructure expansion is not confined to its own borders, it is a global tapestry of ambition, ingenuity, and progress. It is an ode to the challenging questions that modern society grapples with, an endeavor that the world watches with bated breath as it unfolds. As the narrative unfolds, a distinct motif emerges, the theme of connectivity, of weaving disparate elements into a coherent whole. China's transport infrastructure symphony, with its pulsating highways, soaring airports, and tranquil railways, serves as a testament to the unifying power of development. In this grand narrative, China takes its place at the crossroads of past and future, of tradition and innovation. The orchestra of infrastructure rings in harmony, a reminder that progress is not a solitary endeavor but a collective symphony that resonates through the tapestry of time. With each new highway, and each expansive railway track, China's melody of development reverberates, a testament to the harmonious dance between aspiration and reality. As China's journey of development continues, one thing remains clear, the story of its infrastructure transformation is far from over. With a nation that dreams big and aspires to connect every corner, the tale of China's infrastructure will continue to unfold, a saga of progress that embraces the beauty of transformation and the power of connectivity. Currently, China is experiencing a massive boom in the construction industry, boasting the world's largest construction market accounting for 20% of global construction investment. Moreover, these figures continue to rise steadily. It's projected that by 2030, China will invest nearly $13 trillion in construction. Allow me to take you through the complex process of constructing highways in desert areas, exemplified by the recent opening of a new highway in China's Taklamakan Desert. This endeavor began in October 2017 and involved multiple stages, from surveying the challenging terrain to designing a road that can withstand harsh desert conditions, including sandstorms. In a similar vein, the construction of railways in desert regions, like the New South Xinjiang Railway, showcases the importance of land preparation, track laying, and specialized techniques to cope with extreme temperatures and environmental challenges. China's dedication to combating desertification is evident in its use of grass grids and green barriers in construction projects. These measures effectively prevent sand movement and erosion, contributing to the reclamation of desert land. Thanks to these efforts, China has restored over half of its manageable desertified land in the past decade, drastically reducing the desertified area. Moreover, China's commitment to renewable energy is evident in the inauguration of the Al Karsa Solar Power Plant, one of the largest in the Middle East. This plant signifies a step toward clean energy adoption and carbon emission reduction in Qatar, highlighting the country's shift away from fossil fuels. 
China's advancements and achievements in combating desertification are exemplary and have even earned global recognition. Through green initiatives, successful projects, and the utilization of clean energy, China is actively working to address desertification and promote environmental sustainability. Step into the awe-inspiring world of China's remarkable construction capabilities, where monumental achievements redefine the boundaries of possibility. Embark on a journey through the heart of a nation that stands as a testament to innovation, dedication, and the relentless pursuit of progress. With a rich history of rapid growth, China has evolved into the world's second-largest economy, a feat that is inseparable from its sophisticated transport networks that traverse its vast landscape. At the core of this remarkable feat lies the world's largest highway network, a web of roads that carry a staggering 80 million tons of freight daily, crisscrossing the nation with efficiency and precision. The sheer scale of this network is paralleled only by the world's largest high-speed rail system, a testament to China's commitment to connectivity. This intricate rail network links hundreds of cities and enables swift, seamless travel for millions. But the story doesn't end there. China's aerial prowess is equally awe-inspiring, with a sprawling air transport system that boasts a whopping 227 airports. And when it comes to maritime supremacy, 7 out of 10 of the globe's largest ports are nestled along China's coastline, underscoring the nation's strategic maritime importance. This intricate transportation network doesn't just serve as a lifeline for the economy, it's a lifeline for progress itself. The relentless drive for advancement has ensured that night and day, the network evolves both quantitatively and qualitatively, meeting the ceaseless challenge of efficiently moving people and goods across the nation. Yet even in the face of such rich tradition, progress is unyielding. Tackling the towering Chola Mountains, which for centuries acted as a barrier between China's heartland and its Tibetan region, is a project of unparalleled ambition. For five years, a Herculean effort has been underway to create the world's longest and highest road tunnel. Once complete, this engineering marvel will obliterate the need for the hazardous dirt road that has been traversed for over half a century. It's a struggle that embodies the nation's spirit, where thousands of workers brave the harshest of environments to carve out a safer, more efficient passage. Their dedication is nearing fruition, with the tunnel set to open in just a month, transforming a perilous journey into a 10-minute drive under the shelter of solid rock. It's a testament to China's relentless pursuit of progress and its capacity to overcome even the most imposing challenges. At the heart of this transformation stands Huang Qi Team, an engineer who is poised to become the first to drive through the tunnel. Armed with cutting-edge technology, his car is equipped with a 360-degree laser radar, a continuous image capturing camera, and a positioning data acquisition system. He captures real-time road information as he navigates the tunnel's interior, contributing to a comprehensive mapping effort that has never before been undertaken. These monumental feats of infrastructure are a testament to China's unparalleled commitment to connectivity, growth, and progress. With over 200 million vehicles coursing through the planet's largest highway network, carrying an astonishing 15 billion passengers and over 33.6 billion tons of cargo annually, China's highways are the lifeblood of its economy. But as China propels itself forward, it faces the challenge of maximizing efficiency and reducing waste. Nearly 40% of China's trucks run empty, leading to higher freight costs and unnecessary energy expenditure. This inefficiency undermines the very purpose of its robust highway system. Chengdu, a crucial transport hub, is taking steps to revolutionize the industry. By employing advanced technology, Chengdu's logistics port is streamlining trucking operations. Trucks are matched with cargo requirements, reducing empty runs and optimizing freight transportation. This digital innovation is not only changing the way goods are moved, but also paving the way for a more energy-efficient future. However, highways aren't the only backbone of China's transport prowess. The Yangtze River, the longest in China, has long played a vital role in its communications. The Three Gorges Dam, a monumental feat of engineering, stands as both a flood control mechanism and a significant energy generator, providing power to nine provinces and two cities. With the dam's completion, 
the Yangtze River has evolved into the world's busiest inland waterway, allowing ships to navigate its once treacherous waters with ease. As China embraces its role as a global player, its demands for energy are substantial. Vast coal reserves in its arid west must be transported thousands of kilometers to meet the energy needs of its thriving eastern cities. The Shuahuang Railway stands as a testament to this logistical marvel, an artery through which 226 trains run daily, carrying essential coal supplies that fuel the nation's growth. The railway is a feat of engineering brilliance, navigating treacherous terrain, and overcoming steep descents to ensure the safe and efficient transport of vital resources. Amidst this vast network of connectivity, the heart of Beijing is witnessing the rise of another marvel, a new super airport. This terminal, a marvel in glass and steel, stands as a testament to China's unrelenting commitment to innovation. With a design that optimizes space and maximizes convenience, passengers will be able to traverse this sprawling hub without ever traveling more than 600 meters to reach their gate. But the marvels don't end with the terminal. Beneath its surface lies an even greater innovation. The integration of a high-speed railway station beneath the airport terminal allows for seamless transfers among multiple modes of transportation. This innovation, fueled by cutting-edge technology, ensures that China's new airport doesn't merely serve as a hub but transforms the way people move within a city. In a speech, Professor Ellison from Harvard University commented on the speed of China's development, saying, Everything is progressing so quickly that we don't even have time to be amazed. China has actually soared. It's meteoric. All this has happened so fast, we haven't yet had time to be astonished. To illustrate his point, Professor Ellison gave an example. In the state of Massachusetts, USA, there was a bridge that underwent repairs starting in 2012 with an estimated duration of two years. Well, guess what? Professor Ellison said. In 2014, they said it wasn't finished. Uh, in 2015, they said it would take one more year. In 2015, they said it's not finished. We're not going to tell you when it's going to be finished. <laughs> Finally, last year it was finished three times over budget. On the other hand, there is a bridge in Beijing, China called the San Yuan Bridge, which is several times larger than the American Bridge. In 2015, the Chinese decided to renovate it. Professor Ellison asked, How long did it take for them to complete the project? 2015. What do you bet? Take a guess. Okay. Take a look. The answer is 43 hours. Now, of course, that couldn't happen in New York. Yes. Yup, you heard that right. Just 43 hours. Of course, such a thing would never happen in New York. It's downright impossible. These words perfectly sum up China's infrastructure mania. There is also a young man named Luo Jingyang. He visited Dalian, China in 2013 as a tourist. And when he returned in 2015, he was in for a shock. There stood a sea-crossing bridge that hadn't existed before. He exclaimed, Wow, this is China's speed. But my friends, that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to China's infrastructure prowess. Fast forward to 2018, and China's showcasing its strength once again. Due to conflicts with a newly constructed route, the Longyan railway station in Fujian province had to be demolished. After extensive discussions, experts decided to directly move the entire station. The plan was quickly finalized, and construction began. To avoid disrupting normal traffic the following day, the project was carried out at night with 1,500 workers and countless construction machines. 
China completed a whopping 1.5 kilometer long infrastructure project in less than nine hours. When foreign media caught wind of this, it caused quite a stir. We're hearing these complaints about our transport structure. On substandard train services. Just wondering, for the sake of argument, how the Chinese do these things. They were able to build a whole new station in the space of nine hours by flooding it thousands of workers. We should be much more imaginative about getting infrastructure in instead of condemning people to being isolated in remote areas. Was it nine hours they built? Nine hours. Sounds Look like it a up. There's a, there's, there is there is a video here. We, you've we got, got, you've we got, got to watch the workers out of Many people found it hard to believe that China could achieve such a feat. So, just how strong is China's infrastructure capability? Let's dive into some examples. China is the only country in the world that provides electricity to every household among its 1.4 billion population. It has the largest coverage of power grids in the world, with 9.96 million communication base stations, ranking first globally. China also has over 1 million highway and railway bridges, ranking first in the world. Its high-speed rail network spans a total of 31,000 kilometers, ranking first globally, while its expressway network covers 131,000 kilometers, also ranking first in the world. It's worth mentioning that China's first expressway, the Shenyang Dalian Expressway, was officially opened in 1988. Can you believe that within just over 30 years, China went from zero to becoming the global leader? It's like they hit the fast-forward button on development. Here's a fun fact. China consumed as much cement in three years as the United States did in nearly a century. That's how rapid changes have become the norm in China. However, if we want to talk about China's ability as an infrastructure maniac, we have to thank the United States for teaching China a valuable lesson. Back in the early days of China's founding, infrastructure wasn't exactly a top priority. After all, they had just emerged from a century of humiliation and were focused on overcoming poverty and weakness, making sure people had enough to eat. Meanwhile, the United States was flexing its infrastructure muscles with 400,000 kilometers of railways, 124,000 kilometers of highways, and engineering marvels like the Empire State Building and the Hoover Dam. In 1950, the U.S. produced a staggering 87.85 million tons of steel while China managed only 610,000 tons. But then, China's predecessors in the Volunteer Army faced off against the mighty United States. Picture this, during the Battle of Chosen Reservoir on December 5, 1950, the U.S. 1st Marine Division was on the run, desperately trying to escape. The Xuemen Bridge in Guderi was a crucial escape route. But guess what? The Chinese Volunteer Army had already blown it up. And every time the U.S. military engineers repaired the bridge, the Chinese soldiers would destroy it again. It was a battle of wills. But the U.S., with its powerful industrial capacity, managed to transport eight sets of 8.8 .8 tons of bridges from Japan within two days. And just like that, they swiftly constructed a massive all-steel 50-ton bridge. And then they swiftly withdrew. That scene left an indelible mark on our predecessors in the Volunteer Army. Since then, China realized that it must become stronger, or else it would be subjected to aggression. In 1953, with the end of the Korean War, China officially embarked on its first five-year plan. From that moment on, China put in all its effort to catch up with the United States. If there was no money, they would eat one less meal. If there was no technology, they study hard and try their best to change. If there were no machines, the hands of Chinese workers became excavators, and their shoulders became cranes. In 1958, construction officially began on the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the world's highest altitude and longest railway on a plateau. It traversed the Tangula Mountains, reaching a maximum elevation of 5,072 meters. Most of the route was located in a zone of extreme conditions, spanning 550 kilometers of frozen soil. Once the frozen soil thawed, the roadbed would undoubtedly be damaged. To solve this problem, Chinese scientists employed methods such as building bridges to support the road, ventilating the roadbed, and using insulation panels. 
However, compared to frozen soil, the lack of oxygen, low temperatures, and ultraviolet radiation posed even greater challenges. For this purpose, China invested nearly 200 million yuan and established 115 medical support points along the railway, with over 600 resident medical personnel. Through their tireless efforts, since the start of the qinghai tibet Railway, they have treated a total of 453,000 patients without a single death. This miraculous sky road took 26 years to complete and open for operation, opening up the previously isolated qinghai tibet Plateau. It stands as a significant milestone in China's history of infrastructure development. After 70 years of storms and transformations, China has grown into a soaring dragon, and its infrastructure strength has reached an incredible level. One of the most astonishing examples is the construction of the Huashenshan and Leishenshan hospitals. In 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, China needed a dedicated hospital to tackle the outbreak head-on, and boy, did they deliver. The Wuhan Huashenshan Hospital was built in just 10 days, from January 23rd to the morning of February 2nd. That's right, 10 days. And as if that wasn't jaw-dropping enough, three days later, they completed the Leishenshan Hospital in another 10-day sprint. These incredible feats made headlines worldwide, and rightly so. This was a miracle, and it was the Chinese workers who made this miracle happen. China has the world's most dedicated laborers. The labor force is nothing short of extraordinary. Those ordinary workers have achieved countless world records that left Americans scratching their heads in disbelief. They represent the cohesion of China and embody the national spirit. They are equally deserving of remembrance and praise. This is the only explanation for why China is called the infrastructure maniac. Let's move on to the world's longest dam, built by Chinese engineers in Sudan. The Sudanese Mero Dam, located about 350 kilometers north of the capital, Khartoum, spans 1.1 miles, making it the world's longest dam. Considering that China's Three Gorges Dam is only 2,000 kilometers long, the Mero Dam is practically the second Three Gorges Dam. When Sudan first issued a global tender, hardly any country, including the United States, dared to respond because the budget for this project was too low to be profitable. China stepped up and took on the project. After reaching an agreement, a team of Chinese experts was sent to assist in the construction. Initially, the construction faced difficulties as Sudan lacked the industrial and economic strength to use advanced materials. This forced China to devise a simple earth and stone plan. However, Sudan's engineers lacked sufficient technical expertise, so Chinese engineers had to be hands-on, simultaneously building the dam and teaching the Sudanese engineers. Soon, skilled Sudanese engineers emerged, and together with China, they overcame numerous challenges to complete the project. After the dam was completed, Sudan experienced a significant leap in its national strength. However, as American experts had predicted, the project's budget was severely insufficient, leaving China with little profit. So why did China help Sudan build the dam? The reason is simple. China aimed to expand cooperation with African countries. Upon completion, Sudan placed great trust in China, leading to numerous collaborations between the two nations. China has now become one of the most welcomed countries in Africa. Behind China's title of construction magician, few know that China encountered tremendous challenges while constructing an ultra-long tunnel, digging 14 kilometers, and only managing a little over 2 kilometers per year. This is certainly not fitting for the title of China's construction magician. The tunnel, the longest in North Africa, was deemed a disaster by French engineers due to its complex geological conditions. China's engineers spent nearly seven years conquering this challenge. The tunnel's success highlighted China's construction capabilities, leading many countries to entrust their infrastructure projects to China. Today, China's influence in Africa has gradually surpassed that of France. Moving on to large-scale projects within China's borders, before the project was even completed, it drew worldwide attention. Electricity construction has always been a focal point of China's future, as its vast population demands increasing energy year by year. 
With many economic facilities relying on water transport in inland China, hydraulic engineering is indispensable. Although the construction of the Three Gorges Dam significantly improved China's power supply, it still couldn't meet the country's current electricity demands. China is known for its advanced hydraulic engineering, and the West East Electricity Transmission Project is a result of this background. The project's centerpiece is the Baiheaton Hydropower Station, which has already become one of the world's largest arch dams under construction. The Baiheaton Hydropower Station stands in a geographically challenging location, completed on the main course of the Jinsha River. It is the second largest hydropower station downstream of the Jinsha River among four large hydropower stations. In just four years, the hydropower station was completed and started storing water. In the following seven months, it underwent electricity testing and grid commissioning before all units were officially put into operation. This project broke numerous world records and was as challenging as the Three Gorges Dam. The Baiheaton Hydropower Station's success showcased China's formidable engineering capabilities, especially in power generation. Currently, there is no other hydroelectric power plant in western China as powerful as this one, making it unique. However, constructing such large units was not a straightforward task for China, especially given its location in an earthquake-prone area. The basic requirements were for it to be earthquake-resistant, robust, reliable, and durable. To complete the dam's casting, construction personnel had to dig and deliver materials simultaneously. Geologically, the natural dam foundation of the Jinja River area is not solid, mostly composed of basalt, which is prone to cracks due to its many fractures. If exposed to water for long periods, its expansion increases the risk of collapse. To mitigate this, China's engineering team used low heat cement during casting, ensuring minimal heat release to prevent cracking. Additionally, they invented seamless construction joint technology to make the spillway tunnel appear mirror smooth. Ultimately, the spillway tunnel completed the flood discharge test, releasing water at a speed of 48 kilometers per second, becoming the world's largest group of unpressurized spillway tunnels. Undoubtedly, the Baiheaton Hydropower Station is an essential project in China's water management plan. It will provide ample electricity to eastern China while contributing significantly to global green, low-carbon, and environmental protection efforts. In just one day, the power generated by the Baiheaton Hydropower Station can meet the annual electricity consumption of over 500,000 households. With the sturdy underground cavity, these large generators can now be safely placed for operation. Despite differing opinions on environmental concerns, this marks China's future energy direction, transitioning from traditional to clean energy. With the advancement of new water management plans, China is set to go further on the path to clean energy. In recent years, China has continuously constructed large-scale engineering projects, increasing investment in new projects and establishing a high-level technological innovation pattern and infrastructure. China's new infrastructure is facing unprecedented development opportunities. With its massive market, complete industrial system, and the original intention of China's development foundation, implementing new infrastructure has all the necessary conditions. In terms of technology maturity, the deep integration of digital technology in the real economy gives China an advantage with a wealth of data and diverse application scenarios, conducive to accomplishing new infrastructure tasks with existing technology. China's infrastructure not only brings convenience to its citizens but has also started to extend beyond its borders, helping other countries improve their infrastructure. China's infrastructure endeavors have not only helped other countries achieve modernization but have also brought numerous benefits to China. It's a win-win situation. China's remarkable engineering and construction strength has left many foreigners believing that China is already a developed country. How do you view these evaluations? We would love to hear your thoughts and insights in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with more fascinating content. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.